end time prophecies end time prophecies you open up in the book of judges chapter 6 and verse 1 judges 6 and 1 and the children of israel did evil in the sight of the lord and the lord delivered them into the hand of midian seven years and the hand of midian prevailed against israel because of the midianites the children of israel made them the dens which are in the mountains and caves and strongholds so they were running running for their life they had to run and, and live in the, in the high places and away from the cities and so it was when israel had sown that the midianites came up and the amalekites and the children of the east even they came up against them and, and when they plant the crops and they encamped against them and destroyed the increase of the earth they destroy all the crops till thou come unto Gaza and left no sustenance for Israel, neither sheep nor ox nor ass. They killed everything, all their food supply, because they were running. For they came up with their cattle and their tents, and they came as grasshoppers for multitude. For both they and their camels were without number, and they entered into the land to destroy it. So they came with a, a massive army against the Israelites for, for what sin. And Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, and they did what? cry unto the Lord. So the history of this book, this Bible, from the beginning, from Genesis to Revelation, <coughs> is the children of Israel, the children of God, going into sin, the Messiah God, giving them, delivering the, the laws, that is commandments and judgments as guidelines for us to live by, or roadmaps for us to live by to attain eternal life, and to what? Rule the earth, and they what? Be going into sin, going into violation of these laws, and the Messiah delivering us into captivity and allowing the nations to oppress us. From beginning, to, and he cried out, and then when he cried, what happened? And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. And when we cry out, in each captivity, what happens? And it came to pass, when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, because of the Midianites, that the Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel. The Most High will send a prophet to guide them. Okay, this is what they're doing wrong. That's what they're doing wrong. Come back to my laws. Pay attention. He sent, go and guide them and tell them where they're going wrong. Bring them back to me, so I can come and defend them. Pay attention. And he sent a prophet unto them. Thus said the Lord, the God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt and brought you forth out of the house of bondage. So out of captivity means what? House of bondage or Egypt means the house of bondage or captivity or house of captivity. So we went through multiple captivities in the book, throughout the book, from Genesis to Revelation, as we are in right now, final captivity. And I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all that oppressed you and drive them out from before you, and gave you their land. Because when the Mosai is with you, he will drive out all enemies from before you. And, I, and what? I gave you their land. And I said unto you, I am the Lord your God. Fear not the gods, Lorkis, gods of the Amorites, of the heathen nation. Don't fear them gods. Whose land ye dwell? But ye have not obeyed my voice. The Mosai say, we Israelites have what? Disobeyed his laws. That is, the voice is what? What is the voice of the Lord? Daniel chapter 9, verse 11. What is the voice of the Lord that we have not obeyed? Daniel 9 and 11. I read verse 10. Neither have you obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his laws. The laws of the voice of the Lord is what? His laws. Which he said before us by his servants the prophets. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law, and even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Which is the laws of the Mosai and the commandments of the Mosai God. Let me say, you're not obeying my voice. You're not doing the commandments I gave you for your good. Back to Judges 6. And verse 10. And I said unto you, I am the Lord your God. Fear not the gods, Lorcas, Geodias, these earthly hidden gods of the Amorites, in whose land you dwell. Because with that way the most I say, the gods of the nation are what? Idols. They are idols. Don't fear them. And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak, which, which, is, which was an offer that pertained unto Joash, the Ab Abiezerite, and his son Gideon, thresh wheat by the pine press to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, the Lord is with thee. I am with you, Gideon, thou mighty man of valor. Gideon, what? You are a mighty man of valor. And Gideon said unto him, O my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? Why are we being in, in, kept, conquered? Why are we being conquered and oppressed? And where be all these miracles which our fathers told us of saying? Did not the Lord bring us up out of, from Egypt? But now the Lord had forsaken us and delivered us into the hand of the Midianites. So Gideon said, all the great, great stories the, our forefathers leave in the throughout the scriptures for us. How he delivered us from Egypt. He smiled the Egyptians. How come he delivered us back into the, the hidden hands? And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? The most I said, you go against them now. I am with you. Go against them. When you cry out unto the Lord, means what? They start obeying the voice of the Lord. 
Then verse say what? Verse 6. And Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites, and the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. So they started obeying the voice. They repented, started keeping the laws because of the oppression. And the most I say, Go, I with you. I send. And he said unto him, verse 15, and he said unto him, O oh my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least of my father's house. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Egyptians as one man. The most I say, What? I am with you. You go. You don't go. No, we say smite them as what? As one man. Because I'm fighting for you. It's, it's, it's spiritual stuff happening in the background. That's what we know. We're so we reading this book and not understanding. Because it's beyond our, 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 our earthly comprehension. To say, when the Messiah say, go. I am with you. It's me and the heavenly host. The army of heaven. Pay attention. To the holy righteous angels. Be with you. You need to pay attention. You physically there in battle, but it, it, it's a spiritual realm happening behind the scenes. You need to pay attention. That no man can stop. When the Most High make the decree, it goes forth. Depart not hence, I pray thee, until I come unto thee, and bring forth a thy present, and set it before thee. And he said, I will tarry until thou come again. So the Most High say, I'm, I'm with you, I'm with you. And then the angel of the Lord put forth the end of the staff that was in his hand, and touched the flesh, and the and them cage which he made Gideon made an offering and then what? And there was fire out of the rock and consumed the flesh. So the, the, the most I accepted his offering. That was the back then. No sacrifice and offerings in this time. Because Yahushua has died. He's the Lamb of God that take away the sin of the world, giving us grace and faith. And keeping the rest of the laws. And when Gideon accept animal sacrifice and offerings. And when Gideon perceived that he was an angel of the Lord, Gideon said, Alas, O Lord, O Lord God. For because I have seen an angel of the Lord face to face. He said, what? I see an angel, what? Face to face. You need to pay attention. They appear to him. <laughs> they appear to him. Go to um, Judges 7 and read verse 1. Then Jerubbabel, who is Gideon, and all the people that were with him, rose up early and pitched it beside the wall of Harod, so that the host of the Midianites were on the north side of them by the head of Morah in the valley. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me. To give the Midianites into their hands. The most I say, Gideon, yeah, their army is too big. Too much, too much is uh, Israelites between all of yeah, Too much, too much already. I want what, a smaller number. Why? The most I say, there are too many for me to give the Midian Midianites into their hands. That massive army going. He said, what? No, I ain't delivering them because it's a new innumerable host come against them. And the most I say, no, nah, Gideon, their army is still too big. What happened? The reason why there are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hand, lest Israel, the Israelites, vaunt themselves against me. Lest they do what? Vaunt themselves against me and take the credit. We are the men of the Lord, we are the army of the Lord, and they need to pay attention. Lest they do what? Vaunt themselves against me and take the credit from the Most High. We are the one. We save Israel. You need to pay attention. We are the army of the Lord. We are the men of the Lord, and the army of the Lord, and pay attention. The Most High say what? There are too many for me. To give the Midianites into their hands, lest Israel vaunt themselves against me. Pride, pride and arrogance. Saying, what are they going to say? My own hand had saved me. We are the army of the Lord on the earth. Pay attention. We delivered the Israelites. You need to pay attention. Most I say they're going to vaunt themselves against me. What could I do? Now therefore, go to and proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid. Whosoever is what? Fearful and afraid. You have a faint hearted or fearful spirit. Do what? Let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. And their return of the people, 20 and 2,000, and they remained 10,000. So 22,000 went back. So 32,000 altogether, 22,000 went back. And, and, and 10,000 10, remained. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people are yet too many. See, most I say, there's still too much of them. <laughs> That's why. Bring their, them down into the waters, and I will try them for the day. Most I say, I'm going to do, do something to you. And tell you, they're going to figure out who to send back and who to keep. And of whomsoever I say unto thee, this shall not go with thee, the same shall not go. The most I say, I would point out who to keep and who to send back home. So he brought down the people unto the water, and the Lord said unto Gideon, Everyone that lappeth of the water with his tongue, as a dog lappeth, him shall thou set by himself. Likewise, everyone that bore down upon his knees to drink. So he said, the ones who do what? Who lap like a dog. And the ones who do what? Who bow down upon his knees to drink. So what? And the number of them that lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, were three hundred men. And all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink water. So these ones, do, the, the ones who were dip, dipping their hand in the water, dipping the water and bringing it and lapping, what were they doing? They were still watching. They were watching. They, were, they, they could be they cognizant of what's happening around them. 
look at the drinking and they say what they're watching. The ones I say, oh, these ones in the common sense. But the rest who do what? They go down on their knees and bury their head in the water to drink. They go down on their knees and put their head on the water, the straight in the water and drinking. They can't see no danger coming. That's what the most I say. You watch the wild animals. How do them alligators take all them, them animals drinking in the, in the, in the, in the, the lakes? They go, they go in the water and the, the alligator take them out. Bend down and push their head on the water. The most I say, dip in your hand, take it up. You can't reach it, but dip and up. So he said, these 300 are one. And the Lord said unto Gideon, by the 300 men that lapped, will I save you, the ones who used the wisdom and did this. So still could be cognizant of your enemies. I will most I say, watch. The, by these 300 men, I will save you. I will save you and deliver the Midianites into thine hand. So you're going to take out all the army. All them hundreds of thousands of men you see in there, 300 men are using. That's what the most I say, 300. And it was so when Gideon heard the telling of the dream and the interpretation thereof that he worshipped and returned unto the host of Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord had delivered into your hand the host of Midian. Midian. So the most I revealed them in a dream and says what? I dream and went, um, verse 12, and the Midianites and the Malachites and all the children of the east lay along the valley like grasshoppers for multitude. They were like innumerable hosts. And he, and he compared them to grasshoppers. And their camels were without number, as the sand by the seaside for multitude. Massive army. And when Gideon was come, behold, there was a man that told a dream unto his fellow, and said, I dreamed a dream, and lo, a cake of barley, a barley bread, tumbled into the host of Midian, and came into a tent, and smote it, and that it fell and overturned it. And the tent lay along. And his fellow answered and said, This is nothing else, save the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, a man of Israel. For into his hand had God delivered Midian and all the hosts. So he gave him the interpretation in dreamy dream. He telling his fellow soldier. And it was so, when Gideon heard the telling of the dream, and the interpretation thereof, that he worshipped and returned unto the host of Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord had delivered into your hand the host of Midian. Midian. And he divided the three hundred men into three companies, and he put a trumpet in every man's hand, with empty pitchers and lamps within the pitchers. And he said unto them, Look on me, and do likewise. He said, Look for my signal. And behold, when I come to the outside of the camp, it shall be that. As I do, so shall he do. He say, whatever I do, you follow. And when I blow with a trumpet, I and all that are with me, then blow you the trumpets also on every side of the, all the camp. So he divide them on different sides. So he say, when we blow here, you blow here and you blow there. Blow. And when I blow with the trumpet and I, I and all that are with, with me, then blow you the trumpets also on every side of the camp and say, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. The what? The sword of the Lord and Gideon, because the Mosai with him. So Gideon and the hundred men that were with him came unto the outside of the camp in the beginning of the middle watch. And they that had sorry, and they had but newly set the watch. The, the Midian knights had they got, they, they changed the guard, and they blew the trumpets, and break the pitchers that were in their hands. And the three companies blew the trumpets, and break the pitchers, and held the lamps in their left hands, and the trumpets in their right hands, to blow it all. And they cried, The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. And they stood every man in his place round about the camp. And all the hosts ran and cried and fled. And the three hundred blew the trumpets. And the Lord set every man's sword against his fellow. Even throughout all the hosts. And the hosts fled to Bethsita in Zerat. Zerat and to the border of abel Moholah, Unto Tabat. And the men of Israel gathered themselves together out of Naphtali and out of Asher and out of Manasseh. And pursued after the Midianites. So the most I got, they would beat them, kill themselves. <laughs> They made them kill, create chaos, and they start killing, killing each other. You need to pay attention how the Mosai works. Mosai did what? Turn them one against another. Pay attention. Take, take out each other. Pay attention. He's the master of the world. They need to pay attention. And Gideon sent message, messengers throughout all Mount Ephraim, saying, Come down against the Midianites and take before them the waters unto Bethbara Beth and Jordan. Then all the men of Ephraim gathered themselves together and took the waters unto Bethbara and Jordan. So the Mosai did what? Take them out. You need to pay attention. And they took two princes of the Midianites, Oreb and Zeb, and they slew Oreb upon the, mark, the rock of Oreb and Zeb. They slew at the winepress of Zeb. And pursued Midian and brought the heads of Oreb and Zeb to Gideon on the other side. So who, put, who did the killing? The Mosai. You need to pay attention. The Mosai turned them against each other. Because they oppressed his people, Israel, the Israelites, the children of God. They oppressed them and they cried out, means what? They repent and come back to the Lord. Obey the voice of the Lord. Come back to the Lord, and He will turn your oppressors one against each, with each other. You need to pay attention. Take them out. The spiritual, the spiritual stuff happening here. You reading this book, and you reading a story. You need to understand. 
need to pay attention. Joshua 23 and verse 1. Joshua chapter 23, verse 1. Joshua 23 and 1. And it came to pass a long time after that the Lord had given rest unto Israel from all their enemies, round about that Joshua waxed old and stricken in age. That he became what? He started to get old. And ye have seen all that the Lord your God had done unto all these nations because of you. For the Lord your God is he that fought for you. The Moses is the one who doing what? He is the one doing the fighting. Am I making this up? Exodus chapter 15 verse 3. Who is doing the fighting? The Lord is the God. The Lord your God fight for you. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. He is the what? The man of war. The Lord is my strength and my song and he's become my salvation or savior. He is my God and I will prepare him an habitation. My father's God and I will exalt him. Moses, Moses saying what? The most I God what? The Lord is a man of war. And the Lord is in name. He's a man of war. Go out to Joshua 23 and verse 3. And ye have seen all that the Lord your God had done unto all these nations as he did unto the Midianites. Pay attention. Because of you. Him and the spiritual host, take them out. For the Lord your God is he that had fought for you. Behold, I have divided unto you by lot these nations that remain. To be an inheritance for your tribes from Jordan, with all the nations that I have cut off, even unto the great sea westward. And the Lord your God, he shall expel them from before you. The Moses is the one who's going to what? Expel all nations from before the Israelites, from before the throne of, the throne of God. His chosen, his elect, his peculiar people, his treasure, hid the apple of his eye. Pay attention. And drive do, do I deliver them into your hand for violation, for not obeying my voice? I will deliver them when they cry out and return to my laws. Pay attention. And Expel them from before you and drive them out of your sight and shall possess their land. You shall do what? Possess their land as the Lord your God had promised unto you. Be therefore very courageous. Be what? Courageous. No fearful spirit. No spirit of fear. Pay attention. Be courageous to keep and to do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses. Keep the law, statutes and commandments. Be a man. Pay attention. Be a man. First Kings 2 and 1. First Kings 2 and 1. Now the days of David drew nigh that he should die, and he charged Solomon his son, saying, He said, Solomon, listen to my instruction. I go the way of all my, the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. David said, I'm about to die. You will be strong and show yourself a man. How do you show yourself a man? And keep the charge of the Lord, thy God, to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgment and his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses, that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest, and whithersoever thou turnest thyself. You're going to what? Do. Keep the laws. That's why you show yourself a man. Back to Joshua 23 and verse 6. Be therefore very courageous to keep and to do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses, that he turn not aside from, from, so that he turn not aside therefrom to the right hand or to the left. Keep them laws. Be a man. Be, be, be fearless. That's what he said. Be fearless. That he come not among these nations, those that remain among you. Don't mingle with them. Neither make mention of the name of their gods. Don't follow their gods, nor cause to swear by them that serve them, nor bow yourselves unto them. Come out of this false pagan worship. False pagan Sunday worship, Friday worship, Sabbath Sabbath worship. Come out of this false worship. worship. The most I say, don't follow their gods, and don't swear by them. Neither serve them, nor bow down yourselves unto them. But cleave unto the Lord your God, as you have done unto you unto this day. You Israelites, like come back to your God. Return to your God. Repent and confess and forsake a sin. Your attention. For the Lord has driven out from before you great nations and strong. But as for you, no man had been able to stand before you unto this day. One man of you shall chase a thousand. He said, Most I say, what? Once you come back to my Lord and you show yourself a man and keep the charge of the Lord and to walk in my ways and his statutes and my commandments and my judgment and testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses that you're going to prosper, what's going to happen? Joshua 23 and 10. One man of you shall chase a thousand. You need to pay attention. Most I say, One of you go chase a thousand. Pay attention. And for the Lord your God, it, he it is that fight it for you, as he had promised you. He said, what? One of you going to chase a thousand. You need to pay attention. One of you going to pay, chase a thousand. Zechariah chapter 9 and verse... Zechariah chapter 12, sorry. Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 8. In that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and he that is feeble among them at that day shall be as David, as powerful as King David. The feeblest among the Israelites will be as powerful as King David. You need to pay attention. And the house of David shall be as God. As what? God. The house of David shall be as what? As God and the angel of the Lord before them. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. You just come back to my law. 
Come back to my law and show yourself a man and stop being fearful. Back to Joshua 23 and verse 11. Take good ye therefore unto yourselves that ye love the Lord your God. Keep them commandments, statutes, judgment, testimonies, and precepts. Keep them. As if you do in any wise, go back and cleave unto the remnant of these nations. If you follow these hidden nations, pay attention. What's going to happen? Even these that remain among you and shall make marriages with them. And do what? Make marriages with them and go in unto them and live with them and have children with them. And they to you, pay attention, you have an intercourse with these nations, intermingling, you pay, pay attention. Know for a certainty that the Lord your God will no more drive out any of these nations from before you, but they shall be snares and traps unto you, and scourges in your sides and thorns in your eyes, until you perish from off this land, this good land which the Lord your God has given you. Pay attention. So the Moses is telling you, this is what to do. Keep them laws, keep them charged. Show yourself a man. Pay attention. Show yourself a man. Stand stiff with my laws. No fit of it. Joshua 24 and 1. And Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and called for the elders of Israel and for their heads and for the judges and for their officers and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said unto all the people, Thus said the Lord God of Israel, Your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood in old time, even Terah, the father of Abraham. Who is the father of Abraham? Terah. You see that these false prophets are already teaching them. What? Abraham is, 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 um, from, is a Chaldean. Abraham is from the Chaldees. Abraham, oh, people are simple as hell. He dwelt in, in Chaldea. Pay attention. When he was sojourning, when he was moving, <laughs> he was moving from place to place. They were, Abraham is Terah's son. Who is Terah? You need to pay attention. Go to Luke 3. Go to Luke chapter 3 and verse. Where did Abraham come from? Who is his genealogy? Go to Luke chapter 3 and verse 23. And Yahushua began to be about 30 years of age, being the son of Joseph. That's Yahushua Mashiach, that's the lineage, the given lineage here, which was, jump, jump to verse 34, which was the son of Jacob, which was the son of Isaac, which was the son of Abraham. So it's coming from Abraham genealogy, coming down to Yahushua. Who was Abraham? Which was the son of Tara? Which was the son of who? Tara. That was his father. Which was the son of Nacor? Which was who? Jump up to verse 36. Which was the son of Noah? Which was the son of Lamesh? Pay attention. Which was the son of Enoch? Which was the son of Methuselah? Which was the son of Enoch? Which was the son of Jared? Which was the son of Meli? Which was the son of Canaan? Which was the son of Enos? Which was the son of Seth? Which was the son of Adam? Which was the son of God? Pay attention. So it's the children of God, the lineage. Where will Abraham come from? Children of God. Not, he's not no Chaldean. You need to pay attention. You unknown false prophets. Pay attention. Leading the children of Israel straight to death and destruction. You need to stop. Be retaught and, and be relearn. Try and save your soul. Back to Joshua 24 and verse 2. And Joshua said unto all the people, Thus said the Lord God of Israel, Your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood in old time, even Terah, the father of Abraham. So he's who? Children of God. And the father of Nashor. You see that? Which is Nashor was, was, was Terah's father, which was Abraham's grandfather. And they served other gods, which was children of God. And I took your father. They went what? They served other gods. They went into idolatry. And I took your father Abraham from the other side of the flood. And led him throughout all the land of Canaan, and multiplied his seed, and gave him Isaac. To who, who's, who's Isaac? Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the Israelites, the children of God. You need to pay attention. So the Israelites come through Abraham's seed, through Isaac, Jacob, the children of Jacob. But, and I gave unto Isaac, Jacob, and Esau, and I gave unto Esau, Mount Seir, to possess it. But Jacob and his children went down into Egypt. They went into Egypt with Pharaoh, who oppressed them, or behind. Pay attention. I sent Moses also and Aaron and I plagued Egypt according to that which I did among them and afterwards I brought you out because Esau was a different seed. When the most I tell Rebecca, two nations are in their womb. Genesis 25, 22 to 25. Two nations are in their womb, she had to show seven twins, and two manner of people, two different people, shall be separated from their bowels. Pay attention, it's two different spirits coming out there. <laughs> that was what I say. One is mine, one is the devil. One is good, one is evil. You need to pay attention. You need to pay because the Mosai make everything in what? Dualities. Good is set against evil. Pay attention. <laughs> the sinner against the godly and the godly against the sinner. You need to pay attention. So back to the tree. 14. After the Mosai say everything is made in duality. So you say what? That one is mine. This one is mine. And my, guess what I did to mine? Jacob, I put them in, into Egypt and the bondage. Go and go down and, and sojourn them. For sin. For sin. For violation. And when they cried unto the Lord, they did what? And when they cried unto the Lord, he put darkness between you and the Egyptians. When the Israelites came back to, 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 to the laws, the most I said, what? I do that. I plague Egypt for them to deliver them. I plague Egypt for them. 
and I wept. And when they cried unto the Lord, he put darkness between you and the Egyptians, and brought the sea upon them. He put them to death left, right, and center, and covered them. And your eyes have seen what I had done in Egypt. And you dwelt in the wilderness a long season. And most I say, you see what I did to Egypt? I wreaked hell in Egypt. Pay attention. That was the destroyer, Yahushua Mashiach, Exodus 12, 23. Yahushua and the heavenly host army was raised in hell. Pay attention. In the first Corinthians 10, 1 to 10. He's the destroyer. Pay attention. And most I say, what? I will send the destroyer and the army. I am with them. And I destroy them when you cry out unto me. When you come back to me. That's what the most I say. And once you return to my laws, I will take out any, anyone. Um, verse 8 And I brought you into the land of the Amorites which dwelt on the other side Jordan and they fought with you and I gave them into your hand that you might possess their land and I destroyed from before you I destroyed what? them from before you the most I said I don't want to do not killing pay attention I destroyed them before you then Balak the son of Zippor king of Moab arose and warred against Israel and sent and called Balaam the son of Beor to curse you but I would not hearken unto Balaam because Balaam was going to the most side he was dealing with, with, dealing with Balaam at the time and the Balaam going to him, and most I say, I would not hearken to Balaam. Because Balak trying to tell Balaam, I will give you money, I will give you wealth. Curse them for me, tell me what's the weakness to keep them to sin. In the book of Numbers. But I would not hearken unto Balaam. The most I say, I don't want to hear Balaam, I dismiss him. Why? Therefore he blessed you still, so I delivered you out of his hand. Because though he was getting, Balak was trying to get Balaam to curse his children of Israel. So most I say, I didn't, I was most people told at the time, because I always keep my laws. And you went over Jordan and came into Jericho. And the men of Jericho fought against you, the Amorites, the Perizzites, and the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Gergeshites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, and I delivered them into your hand. Who's doing it? The most I say, I'm the one delivering them into your hand. And I sent the hornet before you, which drave them out from before you, even the two kings of the Amorites, but not with thy sword. Not with what? Your sword. You Israelites, you wasn't doing the killing. Pay attention. Nor with thy bow. Your weapons wasn't doing the killing. That's the most I say. You need to pay attention. You see what? I drove them out before you. I send what? I send the hornets to take them out. Go to Exodus 23 and verse 28. I send the he hornets. This is who he's talking about? The, the Kikilonic, the Lana Canaan. Right? The Ites. All the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Gugashites and the Canaanites. Let's go to Exodus 23, 28. What is these hornets? These men keep it claiming to be the army of the Lord on the earth. Exodus chapter 28, 23 and verse 28. Sorry. Exodus 23 and verse 28. Exodus 23 verse 28. And I will send hornets before thee, and will drive out the Hivite, the Canaanite, and the Hittite from before thee. The most I say, what? I will send the hornets before you to take them out. To take them out. Where am I going to? I prepare in a way. I send the plagues. It's plagues. The most I say, I'm going to plague anyone that come against you. Go back to Joshua 24 and verse 12. And I will send the hornet before you, and which drive them out from before you. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 20. Deuteronomy 7 and 20. Deuteronomy 7 and verse 20. Deuteronomy 7 and 20. Moreover, the Lord thy God will send the hornet among them until they that are left and hide themselves from thee be destroyed. Thou shalt not be affrighted at them, for the Lord thy God is among you, a mighty God and terrible. Pay attention. The most I say, I am mighty and I am terrible among you. You need to pay attention. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 1. O God of my fathers, and Lord of mercy, who has made all things with thy word, and ordained man through thy wisdom, that he should have dominion over the creatures which thou hast made, and order the world according to equity and righteousness, and execute judgment with an upright heart. So the most I always execute judgment fear, fearlessly and equitably, with an upright what? Mind. An upright mind. Because the most I say, them Canaanites, pay attention to Moses, I say, I deliver them, not by your sword, you Israelites, and not by your bow. Your weapons ain't killing nobody. I do not look killing. As I did with the Midianites, I turned them one against each other. The massive army they had, they was taking one another, out, one another out. Because that noise they make when they blow the trumpet and they break that, it was what? Magnified in the air. Pay attention. They will be hit to start that they hear millions of men coming. Because the Moses is spiritual. And they get, they went crazy, bizarre, and started to kill one another. The Moses said, what? You are sworn and kill one. I was doing the killing. Guess that's what I, as I did with who? The land of Canaan. So who does the battle? The Mosai. Who was doing the battle coming out of Egypt? Go to Exodus 12 and 23. Who was doing the killing? Was it the, 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 the head, I would deliver my army and the children of Israel out of Egypt? Exodus 12 and 23. For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. Who? The Lord said, I will pass through and smite the Egyptians. 
And when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door of the Israelites that put the, the blood, because he must say, put that blood across the door post because it will come and kill you if you don't. And will not suffer the destroyer, Yahushua Mashiach, to come in unto your houses to smite you. That's what you, you will be protected from Yahushua coming and put you to death. Pay attention. The blood was a sacrifice, so the sacrifice that they made, the lamb, when that was a sacrifice, the lamb, that you shall say, what, what, why? I'm making it up, verse 26. And it shall come to pass, when your children shall say unto you, What be net ye by the service? Why do you have to put the blood over the lintel post? That you shall say, It is a sacrifice of the Lord's Passover. Then who, who passed over the house, houses of the children of Israel in Egypt? When he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses, and the people bowed their head and worshipped, so it's a sacrifice, that was an animal sacrifice they're making. And they put the blood to protect the children of Israel from sin. Make sure they, get, make sure they sacrifice the lamb, the lamb to cover their sins. <laughs> whatever sins they in, ignorance, sins, sins of ignorance, willful sin, whatever it is, make sure they kill the lamb and put the blood. Otherwise, they're going to die because they, the angels come in. They're going to kill everything that's evil. You need to pay attention. Back to Wisdom of Solomon 9 and verse 3. Verse 4. Give me wisdom that sitteth by thy throne and reject me not from among thy children. So King Solomon is paying for what? Wisdom, wisdom. He said, give me wisdom. For I, thy servant, and son of thine handmaid, am a feeble person and a sh of a short time, and too young for the understanding of judgment and laws. King Solomon said, I, I young. David, go on, and I don't really understand these laws and judgments, so give me wisdom to understand them. So I could judge equitably. For though a man be never so perfect among the children of men, yet if thy wisdom be not with him, he shall be nothing regarded. He said, what if you don't give me the wisdom of the Most High, you're not even regarded. If you're leading on your own understanding, we are the men of the Lord. We are the army of the Lord. And not be lying on the most side, the spirit, the, the spirit of wisdom to guide you. You're not even regarded. The most I don't take in, in, in high esteem. Pay attention. Thou hast chosen me to be a king of thy people and a judge of thy sons and daughters. The most I said, um, King Solomon said, you have chosen me to be a king. I didn't make myself king. I didn't make myself ruler. I didn't make myself vanguard. <laughs> the most I said, you have chosen me to be sons to be king over thy people, and a judge of thy sons and daughters. Thou hast commanded me to build a temple upon thy holy mount, and an altar in the city where thou dwellest, the city of David. A resemblance of the holy tabernacle is a what? Replica of the heavenly tabernacle. You need to pay attention. So the most I given the wisdom and understanding to replicate the, the heavenly tabernacle on earth in Jerusalem. That's why the Mosai destroyed it. For sin, they were violation, violating the Mosai <laughs> sanctuary. So you had to destroy it and scatter it behind from 17. It scatters us in the diaspora. Pay attention. For violation for sin. Which thou hast prepared from the beginning, and wisdom was with thee. Which knew thy works, and was present when thou madest the world, and knew what was acceptable in thy sight, and right in thy commandments. Who send out of thy holy heaven? Send what? Wisdom out of the holy heavens. King Solomon says, send the wisdom out of the holy heaven. Pay attention. I remember before parents, you tell me long back, back in the day, because they have some gray hairs there, there's wisdom, and they put in the grave. This is wisdom. This is wisdom. Pay attention. The most I say, wisdom coming from the holy heavens. Pay attention. This is wisdom, but it says, surround Sunday pagan worship. <laughs> Worshipping idols, worshiping other gods in the midst of sin. Pay attention. Wisdom is what? To humble and confess and forsake your sin and beg for your life. Beg for the most I give you understanding and reveal to you the mysteries in this book. What are these things about? How do I save myself and how do I go and save your people, the most I people? Go and instruct them, go and teach them what they must do to save themselves. You need to pay attention. From the what? The end time prophecy, the destruction of what they bring on this earth. Pay attention. See what? O send out of thy holy heavens and from the throne of thy glory, that being present, she may labor with me, that I may know what is pleasing unto thee, that I may understand what, how to please the most I God. Pay attention. How do I please God? Show thyself a man. The David said, 1 Kings 2 and 1 to 3. Show thyself a man and keep the charge of the Lord. Keep the law, statutes, commandments, judgment, testimony, peace for thy good, that you will prosper. That's how to know to please the Most High God. How to judge equitably and fairly. No respect a person. Pay attention. For she knoweth and understandeth all things, and she will lead me soberly in my doings and preserve me in her power. And so shall my works be acceptable. And then shall I judge thy people righteously according to the law. Thus say the Lord. Pay attention. And be worthy to sit in my father's seat. Worthy to be a king over the people. Because I have to judge them fairly and equitably. Pay attention. For what man is he that can know the counsel of God? Or who can think the will, what the will of the Lord is? Who man can figure, he can figure out what the most I will is. What is the most I purpose? What is his purpose? Why did I choose these people? I make them, but I choose these ones. I make all people, but I choose these ones. We need pay attention. Go to Sirach 17, 17. What is he saying? Sirach chapter 17. Who is to know the will of the Lord? 
Surak 17, 17. For in the division of the nations, of the whole world, the Most High said, made all people on the earth, but uh, divided them. Why? He set a ruler over every people. But Israel is the Lord's portion. Pay attention. I choose them. So I choose the Israelites. Pay attention. But that's my portion. They are for me. That's why I could take out nations before them without they raising a sword or a bow. You need to pay attention. Go back to Isaiah 9 and verse 13. For what is man that he can know the counsel of God, or who can think what the will of the Lord is. Why? You can figure out what my will is. I choose the Israelites because I choose them. That's it. That's my will, will, my doing. But for the thoughts of mortal men are miserable. King Solomon said, you're, when you lean on your own understanding and you think you interpret the Bible, and you interpret in the Bible, and this is what the Bible says. And that was this false pagan worship. They pay attention. And these big, wicked, wicked Israelite brothers that come in and still leading the brothers and the sisters into sin and destroying their souls, they need to pay attention. And they want to humble them and submit themselves to the Most High God laws and let Him send the Holy Spirit or wisdom, the Spirit of wisdom, to deal with them and guide them and lead the people, deliver the people out of the hand of the enemy. Pay attention. They what? For the thoughts of mortal men are miserable, and our devices are but uncertain. King Solomon said, if you lead on your own understanding, it's uncertain and you're miserable. Means you're in the midst of sin and violation and error. For the corruptible body press it down the soul. The sinful body, if you continue in sin, not obeying the voice of the Lord, according to Daniel 9, 10 and 11, which is the Lord's statutes and commandments, and we would not obey the voice of the Lord, you're not obeying His commandments and statutes, you what? You're in a corruptible, corruptible body or sinful flesh. It press it down what? The soul. It's suppressing your soul. Go to Galatians 5. It's suppressing your soul. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit, uppercase S P R P R T, and you shall not lust, fulfill the lust of the flesh. You have to walk in the what? Spirit. Keep the laws and the statutes of the Most High God, and you're not, not going to fulfill the lust of the flesh. Pay attention. Or your soul. The soul going to what? If you continue in the lust of your flesh, you're going to oppress your soul. Press your soul down. For the flesh lusted against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other. So that you cannot do the things that you would. You cannot do your own life. Your own free will. But if you be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. So you have to what? Under the law, animal sacrifice. So you have to do the Lord's status commandment, judgment and testimony, precepts, except animal sacrifice and offerings. And you what? You'll be led of the spirit. Uppercase S. Lowercase P I R T. The spirit of God. Pay attention. That's the wisdom we're talking about. Back to wisdom of Solomon 9 and 50. 15. For the corruptible body or the sinful body, what? Or the flesh, press it down the soul. Oppress it the spirit. Pay attention. The spirit of the Lord cannot come in you. You need to pay attention. The Holy Spirit. That's the soul. And this, the earthy tabernacle wear down the mind that muse it upon many things. The what? The earthy tabernacle. Your sin, sin, sinful flesh, going after sinful things. Worshipping idols, wear down the mind. Your mind, your mind is going to what? Wear down. You're not, you're not going to be elevated. Word Romans 7 to say, Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, by the application of the laws, pay attention, so that the spirit could come forth, so that you could, your soul could elevate out of this body, this sinful flesh, and you will not go after your loss. <laughs> you will overcome loss. When loss comes from you, it's like second nature. You're going to keep going. I was saying, show yourself a man and keep the charge of the Lord. So what? The mind that muse it upon many things. The mind that what? Muse it upon many things. It's going to oppress the mind that muse upon many things. What is this talking about? <laughs> what, um, 1 John 2 and 15. The mind that muse upon, upon many What is this many things? 1 John 2, 15 to 17. What is the many things that the mind muse it upon? 1 John 2 and 15. Love not the world, neither the things. The what? The things that are in the world, these things of sin, 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 material, pay attention, wealth, pay attention, acquisition of property, pay attention, loss, pay attention. The most I say, mind, not, love not the world, don't love them, neither the things that are in the world, don't love them. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, things of the world, and the lust of the eyes, things of the world, material, pay attention, and the pride of life. Is not of the Father. It is not of the Most High God. This sinful kingdom belongs to what? Satan's rulership here. So who's blessing you with them? Well, pay attention. Satan. Who's keeping in lust? Satan. Who's keeping in violation of all God's laws? Satan. Pay attention. You need to, this is his domain. He has dominion and rulership here. And what? It's not of the Father. Is what? But who, who is it of? It's not of the Father, but it's of the world. The, if it what? For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father. If it's not of the Most High, who is it? But of the world is of Satan. Pay attention. It's of Satan. And the world pass it away. I'm about to destroy this world. Pay attention. Dis destroy and purge it as I did with the flood in Noah. 
and the lust thereof, and the sin, I'm going to purge the sin, and all the things you're lusting of here. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Keep the charge of the Lord. First Kings 2, 1 to 3. Keep the charge of the Lord. Show thyself a man and keep the commandments, statute, judgment, precepts as I deliver them unto you. That's what the Most High say. Who did do the will of the Father, do the will of God, abide forever. You're going to get eternal life. Mean, abide forever means what? Live, live, live. Your spirit or your soul will live on. You need to pay attention. <laughs> your spirit or your soul will live on. Will overcome the flesh. Because the flesh and the spirit battling. Pay attention. Lost of the things and lost of the eyes. Things, things, things. We keep saying things, things, things. What is things of the world? First Corinthians chapter 7 and read verse 30, 33. First Corinthians 7 and 33. What is some of the things of the world? First Corinthians chapter 7 verse 33. Because he said the thing, the, 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 the mind, the, the corruptible body pressed down the soul and the earthly tabernacle wear down the mind, the mind of the person that muses upon many things. You're musing upon what? Many things of the world. First Corinthians 7 verse 33. Read verse 30, 32. But I would have. It's verse 31. First Corinthians 7 31. And they that use this world, they that what? The men that use this world as not abusing it. As not what? You, you hear? The most I say we get cars on for sin, get, get a job, work, eat, keep my lost status commandments and the testimonies and precepts. That's what the most I say. That's what the Pope, their whole duty. Keep fear God and keep his commandments. Ecclesiastes 12 13. And this, this is the whole duty of man. Fear God and keep his commandments. Keep the commandments. That's what the most I say. That's why you're here. To repent. To repent. But what? First Corinthians 7 31. And they that use this world are not abusing it. They, these ones who love in this world. That's, that's abusing it. They're loving the lust of the world and the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes. The things of this world. Going after wealth. Going after everything. <laughs> you love it here. This is your heaven. That's what most I say. No, no, it's not. That's Satan. Satan's the Satan heaven. Which, which, which is your hell. You is alive. That's your hell. For the fashion of this world pass it away. The most I say, I'm about to what? Destroy it. The fashion of this world or the things of this world. Fashion means what? Things, things that you see in here, that do in here, it passed it away. I'm about to burn it. As I, as I did with the flood, it passed away under Noah. I decimated them. Pay attention. I'm about to do the same. Purge it again. For the fashion of this world passed it away. First Corinthians 7 and 32. But I will have you without carefulness. Don't be careless. What I'm about to tell you. He that is unmarried cared for the things. The what? The things. There are specific things that belong to the Lord. The, that what? There are things that belong to the Lord. How we may please the Lord. What, what, what are the things that belong to the Lord? Lord stat, laws, statutes, commandments, judgment, testimonies, precepts. Show yourself a man and keep the charge of the Lord. You're going to care for keeping the laws of the Most High God. You care for the, what are the things that belong to Him. How we may please the Lord by keeping the statutes, commandments, judgment, testimonies, precepts for your good. Verse 33. But he that is married, care for the things. What? Things that are of the world. So there's things that belong to the Lord and things that belong to the world. Or Satan. Pay attention. You need to pay attention. The first John 2.15 say what? Love not the world, neither the things of the world. Any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes is not of the Father, but is of the world. It's of Satan. This is Satan's dominion. This is Satan's domain. Satan's king, keeping in sin, kingdom. He keeping in, in, in sin, Israelites. Pay attention. So the most I say what? Verse 32, 33. But he that is married cared for the things that are of the world, of Satan. You're following Satan's world. Lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh. You're, violation, you're in violation of God's laws. You'll be distracted. That's what he's saying. That uh, of the world. How he may please his wife. You see that happy wife, happy life. So you're violating God's laws. So pay attention. You need to pay attention to what this book is saying. From Genesis to Revelation. Old Testament, Apocrypha, New Testament. Same thing. Same thing. Pay attention. There's a difference also between a wife and a virgin. A wife and a, wo a woman of marriage. Age. The unmarried woman cared for the things of the Lord. That virgin. That she may be holy both in body and in spirit. She's going to be what? She will care for the things of the Lord. She will keep them lost. That is commandment, judgment, precepts, testimonies. That she will be what? Both holy in body and in spirit. But, but she that is married, the wife, careth for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. She's going to be distracted. Pay attention. She's going to be distracted. Born with the lust of the eyes and lust of the flesh. Satan's kingdom. She, you, will, you will get snared and snared here. Now the most I say, repent. We have to repent. Most I say, you must repent and come back to my laws. What did he say? But she, how she may what? But she that is married cared for the things of the world, of Satan's kingdom, how she may please her husband. She's about to what? Please her husband. Pay attention. And this I speak for your own prophets. Paul said the advice I give you is for your own benefit, not for mine. He said, what? He said, I understand, but it's for your benefit. Why? Not that I may cast a snare upon you. I'm not throwing sand in the rice or gravel in the rice. Pay attention. 
and it's all about to spoil the Sunday food, the best meal. You say what? But I'm telling you something for your own benefit. But for that which is comely, I'm telling you something for something that's what comely means good, good or beneficial. And that you may attend upon the Lord without distraction. How do you attend upon the Most High without distraction? Keeping His statutes, commandments, laws, ju judgment, testimonies, without being distracted, having to worry about doing this, worry about this, maintaining the house, worry about. That's what He's telling. That's what He's telling. You will be distracted. You will have, in the mean, all He's saying, you will have more time to focus on the reading, reading and, and, and studying and meditating and applying the laws. It's going to be easier for you to apply it to yourself than apply it to you, your, your family, and your, your home of the brood, your brood, or your brood of kids. Some people have two, some are one, some are twenty, some are ten. To apply it over, keep them all in line. That's what he's saying. It's easier for you to do because heaven and hell is single fight. It's easier for you to do like this is what I do. I do not, I do not do that. But to persuade your husband, to persuade your wife, to persuade your children to do that is a, is a, a challenge. That's what he's telling you. It's a challenge. I've given you something, an advice that you may attend upon the Lord without distraction. It's easier for you to repent and come back to the Lord. That's all he's telling you. That you may attend on the Lord without distraction. Jump to verse 27. Add dog bound unto a wife. If you wake up into the understanding that you're Israelites and you're married, seek not to be loose. Don't divorce your wife. Don't divorce your husband. That we say. Keep the laws together. Come in and all understand who all they are. Keep the laws. Once you're on both on one accord, both all they are agreeing to keep the laws, stay together. If one don't want to keep it, you have to sever. <laughs> you have to sever. Pay attention. But once you both of you decide to keep it, you will have to stay married. But I don't lose from a wife, seek not a wife. If you're coming single or a virgin, or man or woman of marriage, age, that's what virgin means, do not look for one. That's what we're telling you. Pay attention. Because why? The things of this world, they that use this world as not abusing it, because the fashion of this world passes away. Satan's kingdom and Satan's snap. Satan's snares and traps. Sin, 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 sin. This is sin city, or this is the sinful kingdom. That's what we're telling you. That's the advice I'm giving you. Go to um, James 4. Be James chapter 4, I read verse 1 down. From whence come it wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even of your loss, of your what? Loss. Where does infighting come? Because of loss. That war in your members, war, that where? War in your members. Go back to Galatians 5 and 16. Loss that war in your members. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit. That you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The spirit is an uppercase S. The spirit of the laws of the Most High God. Keep them laws that you, you shall what? Not go after your sin or sin of sexual lust or fleshly lust. For the flesh lusted against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one to the other. Sin. That you cannot do the things that you would. You cannot violate God's laws. That you what you want to do. Things. Things. Back to James 4 and verse 2. You lust and have not. You what? He said you lust and you have not. You kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you have not, because you ask not. You don't, you're not relying on the Most High God. You're relying on your carnal understanding. Our King Solomon said, you don't have the wisdom of the Lord with you. To guide you, we're relying on our own thoughts. and We do this and we do that and we do that. And you say what? You're, you're no more further ahead. You're, you're no more further ahead. Pay attention. The Most High said, what? Because you keep my laws. You ask and receive not, because you ask amiss. Because you're not keeping my laws. That you may consume it upon your loss. It's just about acquiring wealth here. Most I say. You just want earthly wealth. You want earthly things. You adulterers and adulteresses. The most I call this call the Israelites what? You adulterers and adulteresses. Know you not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? James say, if you continue in that lifestyle, loving the things of the world, you adulterers and adulteresses to the most I pay attention. And friendship of the world or loving the things of the world is enmity with God. You have odds with the most high God or friction with the most high God. Pay attention. Once you don't want to keep his laws and then going after things of the world. End time prophecies. Keep reading. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. If you continue loving the things of this world in this sinful kingdom, you are what? The enemy of God. What does enemy mean? Foe. Adversary. Pay attention. What does somebody do to the adversary and the foe? Take them out. Pay attention. He will take you out. That's what he if you don't return you as well, don't return to them lords when Yahushua come back with the heavenly host, the army angels, he's going to take you out. That's what he's teaching in Luke 13 and 3. Except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. You will die when I come back. If you don't come and do my laws, it's no friends sitting, there's no if ands about I'm waiting for uh, waiting for the Exodus. You must repent and come back to the laws, otherwise you will die once he returns. That's what he's saying. You will die. You cause you're my enemy, you're loving the things here. Pay attention. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world, you continue loving the things in this world because it's Satan you're following. You're worshipping Satan. That's what he's telling you. I came in hell to deliver you Israelites out. What? Am I making this up? Go to Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3 
and verse Acts chapter 3 and verse 27. I'll be from 25. For David speaketh concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand, that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Moreover also my flesh shall rest in hope, because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. David is saying, praying to the Most High, what? Do not leave his soul in hell. So what, what did David understand? We were in hell. You need to pay attention. <laughs> From the fall of Adam, you need to pay attention. From the fall of Adam, you were cast out of the Garden of Eden into hell. You need to pay attention. <laughs> you need to pay attention. What did Yahushua come to do? Correct Adam's mistake by allowing the devil to take him out. Pay attention. Correct, uh, correct Adam mistake, come back to them laws of his commandments and go back to the return to the garden in. That's what he's talking about. That's what they're about to do. Neither will thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. Thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulchre is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins, his sperm, according to the flesh, he would raise up Mashiach to sit on his throne. Yahushua Mashiach is of the sperm of David. He's a, he came and was born of flesh, physical, through the tribe of Judah. Physical, and walk on the earth as an earthly man to show the Israelites, okay, this is where Adam went off. God will come and do this. Keep the laws. Be therefore perfect as the Father in him is perfect. Matthew 5, 48. Come back to them laws. <laughs> Repent. Confess and forsake by saying, but his teaching, he nailed them to the cross. Pay attention. Took in all the ordinances that was contrary to us and he led to the cross. That's all this petition and this false pagan worship. Pay attention. <laughs> he fulfilled the law. We don't have to do the law. He pay attention. Kill and eat. We can eat defiled foods. You need to pay attention. Let no man judge you meat or drink. Or we can eat defiled foods. Pagan institution. Satan deceiving it behind still. You need to pay attention. Yeah, we should say, that's what it, this is the way we walk in it. Follow me. Means do what I command you to do. I'm a commander in chief. I'm here to give you orders. Follow them orders because when I come back, you will die. If you don't do it, the, the, the roadmap I left for you. Back to Acts 2 and verse 30. Of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Yahushua to sit on his throne, Mashiach. He has seen this before, speak of the resurrection of Mashiach, that his soul was not left in hell. That is what? His soul was not left in hell. Neither did his flesh see corruption. That he came and walked and showed us this is the way to do. You can keep them lost. Come and keep them lost. You can get out of here. That his soul was not where did Yahushua Mashiach came? come? In hell. He come in hell where David understood he was in hell from the fall of Adam, from the beginning from Genesis. Pay attention. We were cast into hell out of the garden of Eden. Yeah, we shall come to show us this is how you Israelite, you children of God, can get the hell out of hell. You need to pay attention. Go to Isaiah, um, Isaiah 5 and 13. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 13. Isaiah 5 and 13. Therefore my people are going into captivity, the Israelites, because they have no knowledge. No knowledge means the God, the laws of God. They forsake the laws of God. They stop being disobedient to the voice of the Most High God. And their honorable men are famished. And their multitude dried up with thirst. Therefore hell hath enlarged itself. So when the Israelites violate God's laws, you are in hell. You need to pay attention. As Adam violated his laws and we fell from there. That way Ezra was saying, Adam, what hast thou done? Though it was thee that sin, we all suffer it unto this day. Because he went into sin. He went into sin. We went into sin. Go to Tobit 13. Tobit chapter 13. With a proper for Tobit chapter 13 and verse 1. Then Tobit wrote a prayer of rejoicing and said, Blessed be God that liveth forever, and blessed be his kingdom. For he doth scourge and had mercy. The most high punishes and he has mercy when he repent. I punish you for violation. I have mercy when you return to me. When you cry out unto me. Pay attention. He leadeth down to hell. He does what? He lead it down to hell for violation of my laws, as I did to Adam in the Garden of Eden, for violation of my laws, allowing Satan, Eve, Satan to take out Eve, I need to take him out, lead him into sin, into loss, and I what? I punish him. <laughs> Pay attention. He lead it down to hell. He punish and he cast out behind the children of God into hell and bring it up again. He's about to bring us up again. The ones who are not repenting and returning to him. So he's showing his mercy. You need to pay attention. That's what he cannot teach you. Honestly. These false prophets cannot teach you. You have to be sent by the Most High God and ordained with the Most High God wisdom and the Holy Spirit to understand these things and deliver his message. Thus say the Lord. Pay attention. Whether they hear or whether they forbid. The Most High said what? And he did send it, he's leading down to hell and he bring it up again. Neither is there any that can avoid his hand. No man can avoid the judgment of the Most High God. Pay attention. You cannot avoid the judgment of the Most High God. Confess him before the Gentiles. You children of Israel. The Most High said what? Go and testify. Thus say the Lord before the Gentiles. Before all of them. Pay attention. 
for he has scattered us among them. He has scattered the Israelites among the heathen. There declare his greatness. There we are here to declare the greatness of the Most High God. Thus said the Lord, you Israelites, return to your laws of your God. He's about to exalt you back to the Garden of Eden, back, back to your heaven. Pay attention. And out of this hell, you need to pay attention. The lower existence, the lower level of heaven that he placed Adam to be a God over. That was Adam, land. that was Adam's domain. And Satan come and take it from him, usurp him by seducing him. You need to pay attention. Seducing Eve and him. Declare there his greatness and extol him before all the living. Before what? All the living, you will say, that's said the Lord. So why are we here? We're going to, we, we're going to what? Reverence the Most High God and glorify His name and declare His statutes. Pay attention and declare His glory. He's about to do His marvelous work. End time prophecies. Declare His prophecies that's been hidden. Everybody have the book reading. Pay attention. But you don't understand. Are they understanding? Declare what? Declare His greatness and extol Him before all the living. For He is our Lord and He is the God of our Father forever. He is the Most High God. He is the God of the children of Israel or the children of God forever. You need to pay attention. And He will score just for our iniquities. And will have mercy again and will gather us out of all nations among whom he has scattered us. So the Moses is what? End time prophecies is about to gather the Israelites from the four corners of the earth where he scattered us. The ones who are going to repent and return to them laws. Pay attention. If you do not obey, you're going to die right here. That's what he says. You will die right here. You will die right here. If you don't obey. Go back to James 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, knowing that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. If you continue loving the things of the world, you are at odds with most high God or friction. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God if you continue loving the things of the world. That's what we're talking about. Use my enemy. I will about to put it to death when I come back because you're not returning to me. I can't show you mercy. <laughs> I cannot show you mercy. Do you think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lost it to envy? But he gave it more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisted the proud. If you continue to be prideful and arrogant and want to do your will and do what you feel to do and what you want to do and going after your own lust, the most I what? He God what? Resist the proud. Most I will resist you. He will not show no mercy to you. But give it grace unto the humble. He will, dis deliver, he will deliver what? The ones who will bow down and do what he command them to do. Come back to the laws. Submit yourself therefore to God. Keep them lost. Return and repent and confess your sins. Resist the devil. The things of the world. Stop loving the things of the world. Pay attention and lust after the things of the world. And he will flee from you. That's how the devil will flee from you. You need to pay attention. That's how you will overcome hell or get out of hell. By resisting the lust and the snares and traps. That the devil has placed in front of you. That's the most I say. Go and try them. To see whether they will obey me or they will violate. They will continue to sin. That's the purpose of Satan. He has his job and his assignment. To put the angle of carrot in front of you. And it's up to you to obey or not. Deuteronomy 30, 19. Deuteronomy chapter... Am I making this up? Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. Deuteronomy 30 and verse 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. That I have set before you life and death. Blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. The most I say, I put, I said, laws and sin. Choose, because the devil brings sin into the world. The most I said, I bring death, death. But Satan come and say, okay, most I, let me see if they, they love you. The most I say, go and try them. Job, read the book of Job. He said, go and try him. <laughs> it's a popular day, so like, go and try them. See if the weather going to obey, obey me or they will obey you. You need to pay attention. The most I say, I send life and good. Verse 15, see, I have set before thee this day, life and good, death and evil. In that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments, and his statutes, and his judgments, that thou mayest live, that thee could get everlasting or eternal life. Pay attention. James 5 and 1. I'm reading 1 to 5. Go to now, you rich men. Weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your what? He's addressing who? The rich. Lust of the flesh? Lust of the eyes? Pay attention. Your riches are corrupted. The well that you are amassing here is what? Corrupted. And your garments are moth eaten. Your gold and silver is conquered. And the rust of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. You have heaped treasures together for the last days. You have amassed, amassed money, amassed possessions, amassed property. For what? The last days I have enough. You see that? I have enough to last me from my retirement. I amass it from my retirement. You need to pay attention. The most I say, amass for the last days. Behold, the high of the laborers who have ripped down your fields, which is of you, kept back by fraud, quiet. Because you what? You're not paying your workers. That'll be saying, you're not paying your workers equi equitably, so that you're going to what? Heap treasures for the last day. Most I say, what's what going to happen? Which is, and the cries of them which are reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabbath. The most I say, I hear them, <laughs> because you're abusing them. What, what? You have lived in pleasure on the earth, and have been wanton. You lived in what? Living up the life, and been wanton. Lewd, lewd, lascivious lifestyle. Wanton means, you need to pay attention. Lasciviousness. Lustful one lifestyle, lewd lifestyles. You have been done ones and Casanovas. Pay attention. You have nourished your hearts as in a day of slaughter. The most I say, what? You nourish your heart as a day of what? Slaughter. For destruction. I will destroy you. <laughs> I will destroy you. That's what the most I say. Because you're loving the things of the world. 
we we'll talk more wealth than riches. Things of the world, that's what we say. You know, things of the world. The definition of the world land one is lewd, body, lustful, lascivious. Pay attention. Lustful, lascivious lifestyle. That's where we live in. That's what we're talking about. Go to First Corinthians 15 and verse 24. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 24. <coughs> then come at the end, and he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he had put all enemies under his feet. So the Paul is saying the end coming, the judgment, the Hushamash and the Mosa is coming to put, put down all rule and authority on the earth. And power, you need to pay attention, he's coming to shut it down, in other words. For he must reign, because he's coming to establish his kingdom. Till he had put all enemies under his feet. All these heathen nations are going down. This Satan's kingdom is going down. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. You have to what? Destroy this death. You have to overcome. It's the last enemy is what? Death. Because if you continue doing the things of this world, or loving the things of this world, you are on the path to death. Because the wages of sin is death. You're in the kingdom of death. Pay attention. Following Satan. That's the last enemy that shall be destroyed. Pay attention. For he had put all things under his feet, but when he said, all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him, that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. So the Father, Yahushua, coming to shut it down and prepare the way for the Most High God to come and sit. Pay attention. To come that set, set, set up throne right here. So Yahushua to come and purge his sin, purge his kingdom. Else, what shall they do? which are baptized for the dead, if the dead rise not at all, why are they then baptized for the dead? And why stand you in jeopardy every hour? Paul say what? Your life is in jeopardy by continuing to do the things of Satan, or the sinful kingdom, loving the things of this world, sin and lust. I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Mashiach Yahushua, our Lord. I die daily. Paul say I confess my sins daily. Pay attention. What does he mean he dying daily? With the Colossians. Colossians 3 and 5. What do you mean he dying daily? Colossians 3 verse 5. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. I have to kill off them sins. Kill off these, these attributes. Pay attention. Which what? For which things say the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. They are things of children of Satan. Pay attention. Children of Satan who never had God laws. The most I see called the most I say in the division of the nation, Surah 17, 17, the most I set up a rule over each nation. But what? I, Israel is my portion. The heathen have their rulers, but what? The earthly kings and the earthly governors and the earthly presidents and what? And the earthly princesses that are bowing down and vener veneering, pay attention, and worshipping. But you Israelites, I am your God. You are my portion. <laughs> the most I say. You are my portion. So don't go after the children of disobedience because the wrath of God is coming upon them. So if you continue lost, loving the lust of the things and the lust of this world and the things of this world, the wrath of God will come upon you too. Except you repent, you're going to perish. That we do. You always are telling the message. In the, in the, in the, throughout the, the, the New Testament, throughout the Bible. We pen for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I'm about to set up God's kingdom, establish God's kingdom on, on earth. Pay attention. We establish the Garden of Eden. Pay attention. And God's kingdom on earth. The heavenly hosts, heavenly angels. Pay attention. And if you don't come back, except you repent, you will perish. Luke 13, 3. If you don't come back, the wrath of God coming on you. The train of disobedience, Satan's train is going to get wiped out. The residue that will be left will have to bow down to them laws. Pay attention. And you Israelites who don't come down, the wrath of God is coming down on you also. So you have to overcome fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and culture. Sin, and I, which is idolatry. Sin. Sin, sin, sin. You have to what? Overcome your sins. Walk back to 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 32. I die daily. Paul say what? I die daily. I'm going to confess and overcome them sins. What? Daily, as I understand, I apply the law. If after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, what advantage is it me? If the dead rise not, if I don't come back and keep them laws, let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die. Because what? Eat your food, drink your food now, but because you're going to die. Be here to be just mortals, but what? Come back to them laws. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. What? Sin. Sin. Continuing fornication, adultery. Pay attention. Um, idolatry. That's what he's saying. You have to deaden them, them sins. It's going to corrupt what? Good manners or the laws. The, the, the ability to keep the laws or to live righteously or holy. Awake to righteousness and sin not. What he said, awake to righteousness because you're asleep in sin. Ephesians 2 and 1, you are the quickened or brought awake, awakened who are dead in trespasses and sins. Pay attention. He said, awake to righteousness, come back to them commandments and sin not. Stop breaking God's commandments and laws. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. You don't understand the laws of God. Pay attention, you miss a sin. But some man will see, how are the dead raised up and with what body do they come? He said, what body are we going to have? 
Thou fool, that thou which thou sowest is not quickened except it die. You have to kill the sin. Pay attention. To be quickened or awakened or brought back to life. Spiritual life. Pay attention. Pay attention. That's what he's saying. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be. It's not the heavenly body. You're sowing there. You're feeding the earthly body or the sinful body. Those Galatians 5 and 16 talking about the flesh battling against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to another. So that you cannot do the things that you want. Sin. Sin. Satan sin. <laughs> That we tell anyone. You have to what? It may be chance of sorry. And that which was thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bear grain. It may be chance of wheat or of some other grain. Because you have to sow to a spiritual body. But God giveth it a body that as it had pleased him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there are some there is one kind of flesh of men and another flesh of beasts, another of fishes and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. Celestial bodies, heavenly bodies, and terrestrial bodies, earthly bodies. But the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. So the children of God, who I you are my portion, you must put on your celestial body, your heavenly bodies, or angelic bodies. Pay attention. To survive the hell that I'm about to, <coughs> the, the end time prophecies, the hell and mayhem I'm about to bring, and death and mayhem I'm about to bring on this earth. Pay attention. To overcome it. Otherwise, if you maintain your terrestrial body or going after the things of the world or your lust or your sin, you would burn here because the wrath of God coming upon the children of disobedience and you disobeying me too. You're going to die with them Satan children. Pay attention. With the children of Satan, you will die with them. There is one glory. They are all my creation. The most I say created all nations. I, but I, this is their blessing. This is their heaven. I give them wealth. This is their... They live, 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 they live it up in their kingdom. This is their blessing. But what? I'm about to give you your blessing on the next level. That's all. That's what you say. Don't hate nobody. The most I say. You're not sent to hate anybody but to repent and come back to my laws. That's what Moses say. Because you're above them, you're different to them. You need to pay attention. You are made little lower than angels. They are mere mortals. You need to pay attention. They are mere men. That's what Moses said. There is no returning from here to, for them. This is the, where they come, they come from and that's where they belong. Satan seats so near. You need to pay attention. There is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars. For one star different from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, sin, we born in sin, in sin my mother conceived me, it is raised in incorruption. You have to confess and forsake your sin. David say what? I bear my sins, I bear my confess my sin all before thee. Psalms 51. It is raised in what? Incorruption. <coughs> Psalm 51 and verse 1. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot of my transgression. David say, I confess my sin. <laughs> I confess my sin. Pardon them. Wash me truly from my iniquity. Pardon them and cleanse me from my sin. Forgive me my sins. For I acknowledge my transgression. I have what? I confess in it all. And my sin is ever before me. I confess in it all. This is what I do. That is what I did. That is what I do. Between me and the Mosai. Against thee, thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. That thou mightest be justified when thou speakest. And be clear when thou judgest. And whatever I get, I deserve. That's what he's saying. But what? Forgive me. Forgive me. He begging for his life. Behold, I was shaped in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. He say what? I was shaped in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Created me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Say, so begging, purge away them sins for me. Purge away the sins of the world, lust of the things and lust of the flesh. From this sinful kingdom, from, because I am in hell. We just read in Acts 2. He said, What? I am in hell. So purge my sin. Purge my sin and forgive me. That's what he's begging for. Go back to 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 42. So also is, so also is the resurrection of, of the dead. It is sown in corruption. In sin that my mother conceived me, it is raised in incorruption. In raised in incorruption. Put in me a clean spirit. We have to come back to the laws. Pay attention. It is sown in dishonor. Sin, it is raised in glory. Application of the law. About showing itself a man and standing safely for the laws of God. Pay attention. It is sown in weakness. Sin, it is raised in power. Come back to the laws. It is sown in natural body. Sin, it is raised a spiritual body. Back keeping the laws. You need to pay attention. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Adam born what? A natural body. And there's Yahushua Messiah. Keep reading. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. A natural body or born in sin. A sinful body. A sinful body. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Yahushua Messiah is from what? The spirit of God. With the heavenly spirit or the Holy Spirit. By the application of the law to come back to the garden of Eden. Pay attention. In purity. Pay attention. So the angels could come and align with, with, with you. Or dwell with you. Pay attention. How be that was not first, which is spiritual. Adam was not the spiritual body or the heavenly body, but that which is natural. Because the most I say, the angels and the heavenly host say, let us go down and make man in our image and likeness. 
make Adam looking just like us. Pay attention of the clay of the earth. Pay attention. That was his heaven. The garden of Eden was Adam's heaven. That was his own, <laughs> own domain. And he pay attention. Because we make him like us. Pay attention. They give Adam a domain. And then Satan come and take it, take it out from him. Pay attention. How be it that which was not first is spiritual, but that which was not natural, Adam, and afterwards that which is spiritual, Yahushua Mashiach. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. Pay attention. Yahushua Mashiach. The first man is who? Adam. The last one is Yahushua Mashiach. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy sin. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. Who are going to follow this, the roadmap that I give them? Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Except you repent, you're going to perish. Keep the commandments. Thou Yahushua is telling them. Keep them laws. Follow me. My commands. Keep the commands. I came and walked and kept the laws. You keep them. Follow me. That's what you mean. Be zealous for the laws of God. First Bible, Hebrews 2.27. Be zealous for keeping the laws. And as we are born the image of the earthy, we all born after Adam. O Adam, what hast thou done? For it was do it was thou that sin, we all perish to this day. We born the image of Adam, Adam, we born like him. We shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Because we are, if you are the children of God or the Israelites or the, the sons of God, you will come back to the Lord. The elect of God will return to him. Pay attention. You might be Israel born, but if you don't return to him, pay attention. He's severed you. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So if you continue in sinful life or your lascivious lifestyle or lusting or loving the things of this world, you cannot inherit the kingdom of God. You will miss a sin. You have to put on your spiritual body or your heavenly body by keeping the laws and statutes and commandments. You use right. It cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither does corruption inherit corrup in corruption because flesh and blood is in hell. If you're living as a churn of hell, use your lights as the churn of Satan in hell. You cannot get the kingdom of heaven. The churn of, of hell not good in the Garden of Eden. It, it's for the churn of God. You need to pay attention. <laughs> the kingdom is for the churn of God. The, king, the, the Garden of Eden, where Adam was born, is churn of God. You need to pay attention. So if in, in sin, you cannot. They don't have the laws. They're natural sinners. You need to pay attention. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom. And you use your lights following them. You cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Because it's what? You have to... Purify yourself or become what? Heavenly bodies or bear what? The image of the heavenly. Yahushua Mashiach. Pay attention. And the Mosai. By the application of the laws. By the like the angels. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. We say might not. Cannot. Impossible, he says. Neither does corruption inherit in corruption. In you Israelites, if you continue in sin, you're corrupted. You cannot inherit the kingdom of God neither. You will die right here. Luke 13 and 3, except you repent, you will all likewise perish. You will die. You cannot come in because you say, we Israelites and sit back to wait for Exodus. Like Egypt. It's not happening. You need to repent and confess and forsake your sins right here, right now. You need to pay attention. Right here, right now. Because you cannot inherit incorruption. You will die when I shall return. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. See, not all of you will die, but what? Our souls, when we sleep, it means our souls will be destroyed, but we shall what? Be changed. You have to be changed or transformed to get the kingdom. That's what we're telling you. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, when the final trumpet sound, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Transformed into what? Your heavenly bodies, or your incorruptible bodies, or your angelic bodies. Pay attention to get the Garden of Eden by the application of the law, repenting and confessing and forsaking the sin. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. Stop loving the things of the world. Pay attention. You must put on what? Incorruption. And this mortal, this mortal being, or fleshly body, or living in sin and lust and lasciviousness, pay attention, must put on immortality. It must return to the laws of God. Pay attention to become like the immortals or the most of the gods. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, the sinful man have applied the laws, but show yourself a man and keep the charge of the Lord by keeping the commandments, death shall be sold, what? Then, then shall it, sorry, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written. Death is swallowed up in victory because if you continue living this mortal lifestyle or this corruptible lifestyle or this earthly lifestyle or loving the things of this world, you which is a sin is death. <laughs> that we say, death, you're on a death sentence because you're already in hell, living at the train of hell. You will be destroyed right here. Death is swallowed up in victory. So you have to overcome that with which is a sin is death by applying the law, forsaking your sin. And you get what? The death is swallowed by victory by the applying of the law. You get victory or become the incorruptible order. More immortal or the incorruptible by applying the laws to your life. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. The wages of sin is death. If you continue living this lifestyle of following lust and loving the things you want and doing what you want and not doing what the most I God command you, you're destined to be put to death. You'll die right here in hell. <laughs> That's what we say. 
You as well as you are already in hell. You have been cast out. Pay attention. You are already in hell. And if you continue this lifestyle, you will die right here. And the strength of sin is the law. To overcome your death sentence or sin of this sinful kingdom or this low plane of existence, you have to apply the laws of God. Take the charge and show thyself a man by keeping the laws. Keep the charge of the Lord. They start to use commandments of testimonies. By what? Because I prophesy in what I'm about to do in the end. By what I'm about to do in, in the end. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Yahushua Mashiach. Pay attention. The most I say, I send thy son to walk and to show you this is the way. Walk in it. That will Yahushua came and do. He said, this is the way. Walk in it. Follow what I tell you to do. If you don't do what I tell you to do, I, have, I will have to put it that when I come back. It's simple as that. Simple maths. Go back to Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9 and verse 16. And had, so we, we 15 again. For the corruptible body pressed on the soul. The, if you continue with what? This sinful body or sin, loving the things of this world. It pressed on the soul. You cannot leave. You cannot become incorruptible or go back to your immortal bodies. Pay attention. You will not die right here. And the mind that, and the earthy tabernacle or the uh, Adam, the Adam seed born of what? Sinful flesh. Weigh down the mind that muses upon the many things, that loving the things of the world, that you're musing about the things of the world. Pay attention. I want wealth, I want this, I want that, I want things. Pay attention. What? The earthed mind. You have a, you're still in a sinful mind. You're going to die. And hardly do we guess aright at things that are upon earth. King Solomon said, we, as mere mortal men, we hardly guess right about things of this earth. We, 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 we hardly right. Very rarely right. Pay attention. And with labor do we find the things that are before us. But the things that are in heaven, who had searched out? He said, how could you understand heavenly things if you can, you can hardly understand earthly things? Pay attention. That you can hardly understand you in Satan dominion and Satan dominating you behind and keeping you in sin and keeping you in lust. Pay attention and keeping you violating all laws. King Solomon said, if you can even understand that, how could you understand the things of God? Pay attention. He said, you must apply the laws of God to understand the heavenly things. And thy counsel, who had known, except thou give, us, give, us, give wisdom. And he said, what? The most I, we can understand your counsel, except you give us what? Wisdom and send thy Holy Spirit from above. So the wisdom is what? The Holy Spirit of the Most High God. Pay attention. The wisdom that King Solomon asked for is the Holy Spirit. They pay attention. So the Most I have to give it that Holy Spirit for you to understand heavenly things. Otherwise, you get caught. You will die right here in your sin. You will understand nothing. He said, We hardly guess all right about things here. So the Holy Spirit has to come and guide and, guide and reveal to you. You're in hell. Get out. Come back to them laws. Get out. Come back to them laws. Keep them laws and get out. Escape Satan. Have you? Pay attention. I deliver into his hand. For your violation. 1 Corinthians 1 and 17. For Mashiach sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Paul said, Thou shouldn't send me to baptize nobody in water, but to preach the gospel. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us that are saved, it is the power of God. Repentance. For it is written, The gospel is what? Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's the gospel. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent who lead, leading on their earthly wisdom and earthly accolades. Pay attention, they're so intelligent and they're so smart, they have degrees, they have masters. Pay attention, the Moses says, earthly wisdom, I will destroy it. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Had not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For, because King Solomon said, we hardly understand the things of this world. So Moses says, I make it foolish, because why? For after that, in wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Because the world, by their own wisdom, knew not God. So the most I say, by the foolishness of preaching, let's go and teach. Go and teach. We just read it in 2 bit 13. Let's go and teach them. Reveal it to them. By the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Some will believe. Some will believe and return. 2 bit chapter 13. What does he say? 2 bit 13. There, what? Confess them before the Gentiles, this hidden nation, you children of Israel. For he has scattered us among them. Go and testify openly. Pay attention. Declare my, my, my word openly. Confess my Savior openly. Standing stiffly for the Lord. There declare his greatness. And extol him before all the living. For he is our Lord. Extol him before what? All mankind. Pay attention. For he is our Lord. The most I stand in for us. For he is our Lord. And he is the God of our Father forever. And he will scourge us for iniquities. Pay attention. And he will have mercy and will gather us from all nations. Out of all nations. That we say go and confess him. Pay attention. Back to 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 21. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Go and confess them before all nations. So the ones who will hear and forbear, who will hear and will not forbear, who will believe, they're going to get saved. The ones who forbear will die. For the, of the Israelites, you need to pay attention. 
for the Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom. It's the who the Israelites in Greece. Israelites who bought or, or foreign born, pay attention, Israelites. They're not home born, born in Jerusalem. They pay attention, they what? Born in Greece. You call them Greeks. Or or, or, or Gentiles. We refer to the New Testament. Not the natural eating Gentiles too, but it's talking about it's talking about who? Israelites living in who don't know who they are, as we are in this diaspora. Not even have a clue we are the Israelites, we are the children of God. Pay attention. You see what? And the Greeks seek after a sign. But we preach who should have crucified unto the Jews, this southern kingdom, a stumbling block. The Pharisees, when he said the Jews, he's talking about the Pharisees and the rulers, these vanguards. And a stumbling block unto them because they have no understanding. They don't get it. That we saying. The preaching of Yahushua Mashiach is a stumbling block to them. The testimony of God that he testified before all the world is a stumbling block unto them. They don't understand. And unto the Greeks' foolishness, they don't understand. Is Israelites living where? In Greece. Pay attention. They don't get it. But unto them which are called, the who? The elect that are called, pay attention, or the saints, both Jews and Greeks, of who? The homeborn, Jerusalem, and Greeks, or foreign-born, pay attention. Strangers, for, that's what we're talking about through other scriptures, they're talking about the strangers that sojourn among you, and the foreign-born that sojourn among you. Israelites, the foreign-born. Christ, Mashiach, the power of God. Who? Mashiach, the power of God, repent, and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Most I say, my foolishness, most foolish moment is wiser than you. That's why King Solomon said, give me wisdom or the Holy Spirit. Pay attention. For you see your calling, virgin, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. All these men with all these accolades, pay attention, and these credentials, pay attention. <laughs> you have certificates and this and masters and that and doctorate. And the most I say, I'm not calling them, I'm not dealing them, because why? They are prideful and leaning on their own understanding. We know what the Bible is talking about. We read it how much times and we are writing books and making money off of the Most High God Word. Pay attention. They, they're there for monetary gain. Making money off of the Most High God Word. Pay attention. You see what? Not, I'm not calling many, none of them. Not many of them call. But what? Not many mighty, not many noble. But God had chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. I would use base men. Pay attention. Because half the, the spirit of wisdom and the Holy Spirit will come and rest of them and you will understand. Wow. Where is the credentials? <laughs> Pay attention. No credentials. The credentials of the Most High God. Father and Son, the Holy Spirit, or the wisdom of the Most High God Lord. That's the credential. Stand up and keep the laws, statutes, and commandments, and the Most High will come and rest that Holy Spirit on you and deal with you and be with you. And God had chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things that are mighty. All the who have the earthly wisdom, pay attention. The Most High will bring them base men in front of you. Pay attention. And the base things of the world and things which are despised had God chosen ye. And things that are not to bring to naught, things that are all who hate, hate or behind. Pay attention. The Most High say, things that are what? Things which are despised, we are despised means what hated, hated and rejected. Most I say, I will choose them and rest my Holy Spirit on them and work to confound, to bring to naught the things that to bring to naught the things that are the, the ones that are ruling over you. Pay attention, I will bring them down. Bring them to what? To their knees. Pay attention. End time prophecies. You're witnessing. You need to pay attention. What you're witnessing right now? You need to pay attention. First Corinthians two and one. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech. Or of wisdom declaring unto you the testimony of God. Paul said, I come speaking, eloquent, speaking eloquently and to, to bamboos in it with my own words. I was saying, declaring unto you the testimony of God. I am here teaching, thus say the Lord. Pay attention. As the men of God will say, thus say the Lord. Declaring what? The testimony of God. Reading from Genesis to Revelation. Pay attention. Not my own speech or my wisdom or words. Or my but master's and, and, and university degrees. What I have. Eloquence. Pay attention. I, God don't care about your opinion. Most of God don't care about your feelings. What you think, <laughs> what you think, and what is the most I don't care. I'm going to say, thus say the Lord. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Yahushua Mashiach and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom. Not, I don't care what your feelings, the most I says, but in demonstration of the Spirit, uppercase S, the Holy Spirit, and of power, power of the most High God. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Stop following these earthly men. Stop following these foolish men. Pay attention. These weak leaders, these weak vanguards. Pay attention. Weak false, fake prophets. Pay attention. Deceiving angels. But, but in the power of God, how be it to speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the princes of this world that come to naught. They will come to what? Not all these hidden nations, all these hidden kings, rulers, presidents, prime ministers, they come into naught. They're going down. All these false prophets that amongst you, Israelites, teaching erroneous doctrines, they are going down. Pay attention. Except you repent, you will perish. Pay attention. you being lukewarm and contorting and twisting the word of God. Pay attention. Reading scriptures and giving your own words and your own opinion and have the children of Israel sin and violation and sin. 
If you accept you repent, you're going to perish. Just as the heathen nations, you will die with them. That's what you are just saying. You must come back to the laws of God. But what? But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. It's a mystery. Pay attention because nobody told. We are the men of the Lord. We are out front. We have a hundred years to between me. Who is you? We say, pay attention. Who is that fella? Who, is he? Who does he think he is? We have a hundred men of a hundred years of experience between us. And the most I say what? That has nothing to do with me. The most I say what? We speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. That it's a mystery because why you don't understand what this book is talking about. You have no clue. <laughs> the most I say what? It's a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the the what the world unto our glory. The most I had for the ordinance of predestinatedness, I always send a prophet, a prophet in the end. To pay attention. I always send it to what? Go and show them what he's talking about. Go and show them what this is about. Which none of the princes of this world knew. None of Satan and his children knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord or Savior. You see, you see what? They would have never killed Yahushua Mashiach. Had they understood this. But as it is written, I had not seen, nor ear heard. Neither have entered into the heart of mine, the mind of man, the things which God had prepared for them that love him. What? The things that God had prepared for them that what? Love him. Who? But this, for this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. First John 5 and 3. You need to come back to the laws. But God had revealed them unto us by His Spirit, uppercase S, the Holy Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things. The Holy Spirit is what is revealing everything in this, in this book, that revealing what this mystery is about. What this book is about, pay attention. That revealing these vanguards are false prophets. They are fake. They are leading into death and destruction. They are stopping the kingdom of heaven from you entering in. Pay attention. End time prophecies, pay attention. As the Pharisees are doing, they're back doing the same thing. Pay attention. Same Spirit back. <laughs> the same thing. The most I say what? But God has revealed them unto us by His Spirit. The Holy Spirit has to reveal who these men are. Pay attention. He will reveal that's who they are. Go on, by telling the secret. Go on, teach on the house up there. Which was in Matthew. Matthew chapter 10 and verse. Matthew 10 and verse 26. Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, and hid that shall not be known. Yahweh show it in red. He said, Nothing they do in secret that I am not going to reveal to you. Or hate that we do not the down low, I will make it known to you. What I tell you in darkness, what I reveal to you in your sleep, that speak in the light. When the day comes, go and teach it before the whole world. Go teach it before all the Gentiles. Go teach it before the heathen. Go and reveal who they are. And what you hear in the air, what I reveal to you in the air, what's better to you, that preach you upon the house up, house up. And fear them not. I would just say, go and teach. Go and preach what I teach you. Pay attention because the Holy Spirit is revealing to you, the Spirit of the Most High and His Son. Pay attention. Back to 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 10. But God had revealed them unto us by His Spirit, the Holy Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. Get the, the deep understanding what this book is talking about. The mysteries in this book that everybody take it for granted. <laughs> you better have gathering dust. You need to pay attention. It's not just a book. You need to pay attention. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man? That's the earthly man or the mortal man will understand mortal things. He will give his own thoughts, his own opinion, his own feelings. Read a scripture and give his own, his own interpretation. Pay attention. You see that? <laughs> I had one pastor tell me one time, God made 12 tribes and he gave each tribe their own interpretation of the Bible. I said, Lord have mercy. <laughs> Pay attention. Come out of these false Sunday worship, these false pagan worship. <laughs> the most I God made 12 tribes and he gave each tribe their own interpretation of the Bible, which means all nations of the earth is a tribe. Pay attention. One of the 12 tribes. And they have each one of them their own interpretation. I said, what madness is this? <laughs> and he invited me to come. To the truth. I said, you crazy yourself. Come away. You need to repent and confess and forsake your sin. Because you, what man know the things of man, save the spirit of man. Because you have an earthly spirit, you will only understand earthly things. Which is in him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit, uppercase S, of God. The Holy Spirit is the one who have to guide you through this. Pay attention. By you keeping the laws, confessing and forsaking the sin, the spirit will come and rest on you. Pay attention and will guide you and navigate you through this Bible and show you the deep mysteries in this. What is this talking about? Pay attention. These men are false prophets, false, they are devil's demons, deceiving you behind. Because you are in hell. <laughs> Pay attention. Newsflash. Now we have received not the spirit of the world. Paul said we have what? Received not the what? The spirit of Satan. But the spirit which is of God. The Holy Spirit has come upon us now. Let me say because we repent, confess and forsake our sins. That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. We will understand it's about immortality. It's about everlasting life. It's about eternal life. It's about returning to the Garden of Eden. Which is what? On a, a lower level of heaven that was given to Adam to have dominion as a child of God. Pay attention. And was taken from him by Satan. You will understand the mysteries. Pay attention that Eve was seduced by Satan. And Satan put a seed, a physical seed, which is what? Cain on the earth. You need to pay attention. That what? She come back through what? Ham laying with Noah's wife and bringing back Cain on. That's what the Bible says. 
Curse be Canaan, Genesis 9. He said, Curse be Canaan, the Mosai never cursed Ham. The most, it, it, Noah said, Curse be Canaan. That's why he Mosai delivered the Israelites out of Egypt and said, Go and take the land of Canaan. You need to pay attention. What is the history behind it? What, what just go and kill the Canaan and just like that. No, they are the offspring of the, 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 the nefarious acts of Ham laying with Noah's wife. So that's why the Mosai cursed Canaan. Noah said, Curse be Canaan. You need to pay attention. Be, take them out, kill them out, kill them out. You need to pay attention. It's a mystery. You need, it's a, this is mysteries. You need to pay attention and stop being simple. The most I would what? You will understand freely given to us, the things of God. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth. These, these false <laughs> these false pagans and the worship of theology have been spending the tens of thousands of dollars to teach you what? Nothing. You pay attention. Keep your paganism not sin or violation of God's laws. You need it to the cross. You see that? He blotted out the ordinances that was contrary to us. The handwriting of ordinances that was contrary to us, namely to the cross. Pay attention. He fulfilled the law. We don't have to keep the law. Pay attention to teaching to violate God's laws. Pay attention. Which things we also speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teach. That's man's wisdom or Satan's wisdom. But which the Holy Ghost teacher. The what? The Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit or the Spirit of wisdom or the Spirit of God. Pay attention. Father and Son. Comparing spiritual things to spiritual, you'll be speaking on a spiritual level. Because you're on a different spiritual height. Who's speaking to you? The Most High God. You need to pay attention. But the natural man, or the earthly man, or the sinful man, receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Uppercase P. The earthly man, or mortal man, once you continue in sin or violating God's laws, you cannot receive the things of the Spirit of God, of this heavenly teaching. You cannot understand it. It will not make sense to you. <laughs> because if you continue in sin, it's not making any sense to you. It's for who it's for. The elect. The saints of God will hear and will understand. That's the most I say. Go and teach the truth. Because I have them, I have my elect among them. Go and teach. They will hear my messages to them. Pay attention. You see what? The natural man, this is sinful man, continuing his sinful lifestyle, the serious lifestyle, loving this world, receive what? Not the things of God, the Spirit of God. You can't get it. For they are foolishness and things. It's what? This teaching is what? Foolishness to the natural sinner. Pay attention. To Satan's children and all the children of Israel who want to live like them. It's foolishness to them. They can understand. Nothing this is about. It's for the elect. It's for the saints of God. Pay attention. Most I say, go and fish for them. I will go, go and what? Catch men. Go and fish for them. It's elect. I'm not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Matthew 15, 24. That you said, I didn't come for the whole house of Israel. I come for the lost God's children among them. You need to pay attention. Adam's children. You pay attention. For they are foolish unto him. They are what? Foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Only to have the Holy Spirit come and deal with you, you can understand this. Once you repent and start keeping God's laws, the Most High would give you understanding. Because you're spiritually, you're spiritually understanding, you're spiritually heightened. But he that is spiritual judges all things. Yet he himself is judge of no man. Because the Holy Spirit of the Spirit of the Most High God and His Son is on him. He's going to judge, reprove, rebuke, correct, pay attention. And yet he's judge of no man. Because why? The most that God is speaking through him. You need to pay attention. <laughs> so you're going you're gonna to judge God? You're going to judge the most high? That's what he said. I am using that person as a vessel to go and reveal my message or deliver my message to you. Where are you going to judge him at? You need to pay attention. The most high is what? He's judge of no man. Because the man is what? On an earthly plane. You're sinning in the midst of sin. Your, your mind is not spiritually enlightened yet. That's what he said. For he who had known the mind of the Lord... That he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Mashiach. Now Paul said, we have the who? The mind of Mashiach, the spirit of Yahushua saying, the comforter here. The comforter, which is the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, which is the spirit of the Father, he will come to you. That's what you need to understand. So these vanguards pretending, once it's still continuing willful sin, you will not understand it. The most high God, the spirit of God cannot come on you, the Holy Spirit. You're still in willful sin or secret sins. You have to bear it all, confess it all, pay attention. And except you repent, you will perish. Go, to, go back to um, Wisdom of Solomon 9 and verse 16. And hardly do we guess aright at the things that are upon the earth. King Solomon said, man here can hardly guess right at what? In the things in the sinful kingdom to figure things out. <laughs> you can't even figure things out here. And with labor do we find the things that are before. Before, it's because you really read and search and read and search to understand. But the things that are in heaven, who had searched out? He said, who can understand the things of God if you don't want to confess and forsake sin? If you're still in secret sin or willful sin, you're the man of the Lord. We are the man of the Lord and you're still in secret sin. You still don't understand. <laughs> you still don't understand. Because you're leaning on what? Your own understanding. Earthly understanding. You're a natural man still. And thy counsel, who had known, except thou give, it, give wisdom. Except the most I give wisdom, you can you understand the counsel. What the secret is about. What is his mysteries in his book? 
and what? And send thy Holy Spirit from above. So the wisdom is the Holy Spirit of the Most High God. That's going to rest on you and reveal this to you. Pay attention. And you're going to go and rebuke and reprove and correct your brother and your sisters. Pay attention. And reprove the world of sin. <laughs> Pay attention. And reprove the world of, of, of not keeping the laws of God, of violating God, violating God's laws. Pay attention. For so the ways of them which lived on the earth were, re were reformed. And men were taught the things that are pleasing unto thee and were saved through wisdom. So the Most High will have to have the what? Send the Holy Spirit or the Spirit of wisdom on you. So you go and what? Teach the world things that are pleasing unto thee, unto the Most High. Repent, come back to the laws. You need to pay attention. To be talking about it, go and teach, confess it before the, the world. Go and teach them. Let the Israelites come and who will hear? Let them hear. And who forbear? Let them forbear. Some will hear, some will forbear. Wisdom of Solomon, Wisdom of Solomon, 10 and 1. She preserved the first form father of the world that was created alone and brought him out of his fall. She preserved what? The first form, father, first form, Adam, and gave him power to rule all things. And when the unrighteous went away from, from her in his anger, he perished also in the fury where he murdered his brother. You see that? Who? Cain killed Abel. You need to pay attention. Cain put Abel to death. And for whose cause the earth being drowned with the flood, Wisdom again preserved it. Because why? Because Cain murder. Pay attention. Because he was the son of Satan. Satan deceived him and caused Adam to go into sin. Cain become a murderer. The Messiah has to kill the whole generation. Wipe them all out. Save Noah, his three sons, the wives, and Noah's wife. Eight people. Pay attention. Wisdom again preserved it. Because the Messiah gave Noah the law. Noah was keeping the law. And he kept it. Wisdom again preserved it. And directed the course of the righteous in a piece of wood. Of small value, the ark, Noah and the ark, because the Mosai, the spirit was on him, the wisdom, the spirit of wisdom, and the Holy Spirit was in Noah, guiding him and protecting him. Moreover, the nations in their wicked conspiracy being confounded, she found out the righteous and preserved him blameless unto God and kept him strong against his tender compassion towards his son. When the ungodly perished, she delivered the righteous, the righteous man who fled from the fire which fell upon the five cities. Better do who's that? Lot. Pay attention. They just say, Lot, get out. Get out, get out, I'm about to burn Sodom and Gomorrah. I burn Sodom and Gomorrah. We to burn them two cities, the five cities. The most I say, because sin, sin, sin. The lifestyle, sin. The serious lifestyle, sin. The most I say, what? What's going on in this diaspora right now? In this, in this hell, the lascivious lifestyle being promoted and pushed to the forefront. forefront. I'm about to what? Burn it like Sodom and Gomorrah. End time prophecies? You better pay attention. The most I say, what? When, what? He delivered that? What? Lot, the man who fled, fled from the cities. When the ungodly perished, she delivered just the, the righteous, the righteous man who fled from the fire which fell down upon the fire cities, Lot, and a burn everybody else, of whose wickedness, even to this day, the wasted land of smoke is a testimony and plants bearing fruit that never come to ripeness, a barren, and the pillar of salt is a money, monument of an unbelieving soul, Lot wife that look back. You see that? Because she loved the things of the world. She was trying to hang on to the things of the world. Now we say, love not the things of the world, you're going to die. For regarding not wisdom, they got not only this hood, that they knew not the things which were good, but also left behind them to the world a memorial of their foolishness, so that in the things wherein they offended, they could not so much as be hid. But wisdom delivered from pain those that attended upon her. Wisdom is what? Delivered from pain or your affliction or death. Those that what? Attend and who come, to, come back to the Lord, you will deliver from pain or death. When the righteous fled from his brother's wrath, she guided him in his right paths. Jacob free from Esau and showed him the kingdom of God. This Jacob, get pay attention. So Jacob become the Israelites, the children of Israel. And God gave him knowledge of holy things, the laws, made him rich in his travails, and multiplied the fruit of his labors, the children of Israel, and his, his, his property. Pay attention. The most I bless him. In the covetousness of such as oppressed him, she stood by him and made him rich. She defended him from his enemies and kept him safe from those that lay in wait. And in a sore conflict, she gave him the victory. That he might know the God in it, that God in this is stronger than all. Keeping the laws is going to overcome sin. Or sinners. When the righteous was sold, she forsook him not, but delivered him from sin. She went down with him into the pit, and left him not in bonds, till she brought him the scepter of the kingdom, and power again, uh, uh, sorry, and power against those that oppressed him. As for them that had accused him, she showed them to be liars and gave him perpetual glory. She delivered the righteous people and blameless seed from the nation that oppressed them. The Most High will deliver who? The Israelites or the children of God from all nations that oppressed the children of Israel. Pay attention. She entered into the soul of the servant of the Lord and withstood dreadful kings in, the, in wonders and signs. Withstood what? Dreadful kings in what? I will show my, my wonders and my signs in Egypt. Pay attention. Wrath and destruction and death. 
rendered, the, rendered to the righteous a reward of their labors, guided them in a marvelous way, and was unto them for a cover by day, and a light of stars in the night season. We see that? Delivered deliver them out of what? Egypt. But, 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 uh, go to First Corinthians 10. He was unto them a cover by day, and a light of stars in the night season. First Corinthians 10. What is this talking about? The exodus from Egypt. You need to pay attention. First Corinthians chapter 10, and verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant, how that all our fathers were under the cloud, and all passed through the sea, and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, coming through the Red Sea, and did all eat the same spiritual meat, manna, and did all eat this, and drink the same spiritual rock, drink, sorry, and did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was, Ma was Mashiach. Yahushua Mashiach was who did bring the children of Israel out of Egypt. You need to pay attention. Who was wreaking hell, that destroyer. But when with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were an example to the intent we should not lust after evil things, as they also lusted. It's an example for us now to not continue them lifestyles. Neither be idolaters, as some of them were. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. That is what? Neither let us tempt Mashiach, and as some of them tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. So Yahushua yeah, is the cloud that was covering them. You pay attention. The cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. The Mosai, Yahushua yeah, Mashiach, would destroy, taken out, left, right, and center. But to Wisdom of Solomon 9, sorry, Wisdom of Solomon 10. And verse 18, brought them through the Red Sea and led them through much water, but she drowned their enemies and cast them out of the bottom of the deep. Therefore, Pharaoh and his army, therefore the righteous spoiled the ungodly and praised thy holy name, O Lord, and magnified with one accord thine hand that fought for them. Who fought for the Israelites? The Most High God. Pay attention with Yahushua Mashiach as the destroyer. Pay attention. So, what is the Most High saying? You didn't take none, not by might, not by power, but by my word. Zechariah 4 and 6. Not by might, nor by power, but by my word. Keep the laws. Keep the laws, statutes, commandments, and judgment. And the most I say, I am the one coming and wreak hell. Then answered and spake, Zechariah 4 and 6. Then ans he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord of hosts. The most I say, You ain't taking up no sword or no, no weapons to fight against no the oppressors here. No, because I have them oppressing you. But you come back to my laws, I'm going to take them out. Pay attention, but my power. Back to Wisdom of Solomon 10 and verse 20. And what? And magnify with one accord thine hand that fought for them. The great priest of the Most High God, he's coming to what? Fight for us in the end times. Pay attention. End time prophecies, it's about to go down again. Pay attention. This is Egypt. This is Solomon Gomorrah. Pay, pay attention. You need to pay attention. Most about to bring hell against and, and this earth. This is all the four beast kingdoms. Taking them out, he's about to wreak hell this time again. Therefore the righteous spoiled on God and praise thy holy name, O Lord, and magnify with one accord thine hand that fought for them. For wisdom opened the mouth of the dumb. Wisdom did what? Open the mouth of the dumb. Base men, I will use the base things of the word to confound the wise. First Corinthians chapter 1. Pay attention. To confound the wise. The wisdom opened the mouth of the dumb. The spirit of the Holy Spirit of the Most High God is what going to give you the understanding and make you navigate and go through this book and reveal. And made the tongues of them that cannot speak eloquent. The, when they say the tongues of them that un, un, cannot speak, the unlearned men, pay attention, the men who had sinned, the, them that were not a people, the oppressed of the earth, the basement of the earth, the Most High said, is my spirit resting on them, so who's speaking to them? I, I the Most High God, is speaking to them. That's what the Most High said, they're somewhat eloquent. The Spirit of the Lord is resting upon them. You need to pay attention and understand. And who's revealing it? The Most High said, this is my book. This is my, my mystery. Says, who's revealing it? I am revealing it through that prophet. He's a vessel. That's the Most High said, I'm using him as a vessel. Pay attention. You need to pay attention because the Holy Spirit will of discipline will flee deceit. If you're in the midst of deceit, the Spirit of the Lord can come on you. Wisdom of Solomon 1 and 4. For into a malicious soul, wisdom shall not enter. If you're in the midst of sin, you'll be the men of the Lord, the army of the Lord, you're still in willful sin. Yes, pay attention. You still have the children of Israel violated. You're the vanguard, you're the rulers here. But into a malicious soul, wisdom shall not enter. The most I cannot carry and show you the mysteries. You're still in willful sin, you vanguard. The most I say what? No enter in dwelling a body that is subject unto sin. For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit. You're deceitful as hell. Or deceptive or cunning and crafty. Still destroying the souls of the, of the children of Israel. You're still hunting the souls. You're still working for Satan. Pay attention. And remove from thoughts that are without understanding. And will not abide when unrighteousness cometh in you in the midst of sin. Unrighteousness is sin or violation of the Most High God. For wisdom is a loving spirit, and will not acquit a blasphemer of the words. You are blasphemers. The Most High says, so wisdom is the Holy Spirit of God. So whose spirit do you have on you? The spirit of Satan still. You need to pay attention. 
God's word, the most I say, will not acquit a blaspheme of his words, for God witness is witness of his reins, and true behold of his heart, and a hearer of his tongue. For the Spirit of the Lord filleth the word. The most I say, well, I know all, all things, I hear all things, and I see all things. You need to pay attention. You need to pay attention. Be the men of the Lord, be the men of the Lord. No? And the most I say, my Holy Spirit is not in them. These men are living to death and destruction. Pay attention. Back to Wisdom of Solomon 10 and 21. For wisdom opened the mouth of the dumb and made the tongues of them that cannot speak eloquent. The base man, we use the base man to confirm them. Pay attention. To confirm the wise. We have a hundred years service. The most I say, that what does have to do with me? What have thou to do with me to declare my statutes? Psalm 50, 16. Or to take my word in my mouth? See that thou hatest instruction and casteth my word, my covenant behind, my word behind me? You vanguards don't want to keep my laws. The most I say, what? So what are you doing testifying and teaching my laws? Reading my Bible. The most I say, what? You go make the one who is a base man to some eloquent and go and reveal who they are. Pay attention. <laughs> you need to pay attention. End time prophecies, just as it was in, 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 at the end of Jerusalem, what the, the apostles were doing, revealing and rebuking the Pharisees in the synagogues. And pay attention. Sabbath after Sabbath after Sabbath. They are what? The prophets of the men of God are back in the last days. Rebuking and revealing them, vanguards, these false prophets. Pay attention. Pay attention. Class after class after class. You need to pay attention. <laughs> pay attention. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 11 and verse 20. Wisdom of Solomon 11. I read, um, I'll just read one word. Wisdom of Solomon 11 and 1. She prospered their works in the hand of the holy prophet. They went through the wilderness and was not inhabited, that was not inhabited, and pitched tent in places where they lay no way. They stood against their enemies and were avenged of their adversary. By who? By the Mosai. By the Mosai. He was doing it, the fighting. He's an avenger. For when they were tried, albeit but in mercy chastised, they knew how that the ungodly were judged in wrath and tormented, thirsting in another manner than the just. For these thou didst admonish and try as a father, but the other as a severe king. Thou didst condemn and punish. So the Israelites, he said, I'm going to try them and push them as a father. And the others, what? I'm going to punish them as a severe king. Condemn. That they might know that where it all a man sinned, by the same also shall he be punished. The sin, if you continue in sin, you're going to pay. You will be judged. So you have to repent. Each violation will be judged. You need to pay attention. You need to pay attention. Um, verse... Yeah, verse 20. Yeah, and without these, might they have fallen down with one blast, being persecuted of vengeance and scattered abroad through the breath of thy power. By the most high power, they will scatter us away. But what? But thou hast ordered all things in measure and number and weight. The most high met out all his judgment in what? Measure. Number and weight, meticulously and calculatingly, pay attention, as he's calculatingly and meticulously taking apart this fourth beast kingdom, pay attention, right before your eyes. Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 1, the most I say, I will set them in order, right before your eyes, pay attention, right before your eyes, I set in the throne of Israel in order, you need to pay attention, there's nothing you can do with it, nothing you can do about it, the elect of God and saints of God, I'm bringing back my laws and beating my breath into it, I'm doing it by what? Everything in measure and number and weight, calculatingly, calculatingly. For thou canst show thy great strength at all times when thou wilt. The most I, King Solomon saying, the most I could smash them, take all these beasts in, in a snap. But he's doing it what? By measure and number and weight. Calculating it. Pay attention. For thou canst show thy great strength at all times when thou wilt. And who may withstand the power of thine arm? He say what? Most of you could just smash it down, shut it down. But he's doing it what? By precision. Meticulously. <laughs> disseminating this fourth beast kingdom. Pay attention. For the whole world before thee is, a little, is as a little grain of a balance, yea, as a drop of the morning dew that falleth down upon the earth. Most I say, he's, King Solomon said, Most I have the power to do what he want. But thou hast mercy upon all, for thou canst do all things and winkest at the sins of men, because they should amen. Because what? I give them the time to repent. When he say he wink at them, he said, I give them time to repent. I show mercy. I give them grace and faith. I give them time to come back. Because the Messiah can kill them all, but I give them time to, <laughs> to, to fix it. For thou lovest all the things that are. And I borrowed nothing which thou was made. The most I say, the whole creation is mine. I made good, I made evil. So, we, so what? The evil of the earth or Satan's children. This is their heaven. They are blessed right now. They're living it up. They have the wealth, they have the power, they have the rule, they have the military, they have everything right now. It's my creation. I made everything, but and what? This is their blessing. <laughs> but as well as my portion. They're about to get their blessing. The, 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 the children of God are the saints of God. The Israelites, they're about to get their blessing. Pay attention. For thou lovest all things that are, and abhorrest nothing which thou hast made. 
for never wouldest thou have made anything if thou hadest hated it. The whole creation is mine. <laughs> pay attention. The world is a stage. Everyone has a part to play. You have a part to play. Pay attention. Moses said, but what? They are my portion. Surah 17, 17. Israel is the Lord's portion. The Israelites are mine. The children of God. The children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You need to pay attention. And how could anything have endured if it had not been thy will? It is the most high will that everything is playing out the way it's playing out. You need to pay attention. End time prophecies? Yes, it's the most high will. Pay attention. Or being preserved, if not called by thee. The most high is the one calling all the shots. You need to pay attention. No king of these, no president, no prime minister. You want to do this and we go stop this and we go, we go do that and we want it. The most high is the one causing the shot. Every friction, every conflict that's happening on this earth right now is the most high is doing it. The most high is doing it. He is doing it and no one can stop it. Pay attention. But thou sparest all. For all are thine, O Lord, thou lovest lover of souls. Because I made all the creation and I'm going to take out what I take out to establish what I establish. When the apple of my eye returned to me, I will establish them. Pay attention. <laughs> Moses said, what? Nobody's going to stop it. Wisdom of Solomon 12 and verse 2. Wisdom of Solomon 12 and 2. I read one. For thine incorruptible spirit is in all things. Therefore chastened thou them by little and little that offend, and warnest them by putting them in remembrance wherein they have offended, that leaving their wickedness, they may believe on thee, O Lord. So the most I chasten or correct or rebuke by what? Little and little. The attention. He could smash me behind right away. He could smash the sinful kingdom right away. But he doing it what? Little by little. Or in measure, number and weight. Calculating me decisively by precision. Pay attention. Because I am the master orchestr orchestrator. I am the architect. Most I say what? This is my creation. For it was thy will. It was what? Thy will to destroy by the hands of our fathers, both those old inhabitants of thy holy land, the Canaanites. That's why kill them off because what? Of harm's transgression with Noah's wife. Pay attention. Just as Reuben went in unto Joseph's wife. You need to pay attention. <laughs> oh, our forefathers would not the sin or some wickedness doing what? Following the hidden customs. That's how the most I say Leviticus 18. Do not do with, after the doings of the land of Egypt shall you not do. Leviticus 18 and 2. Don't do after them. Pay attention. Why did he destroy them? Speak on Leviticus 18 and 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying, verse 2, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. Verse 3. After the doings of the land of Egypt, where you dwell, shall you not do? Don't follow their custom. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, where I bring you, shall you not do? Neither shall you walk in their ordinances. Don't follow them. Because why? The Canaanites were the offspring of harm, transgression with Noah's wife. Pay attention. Most I say, don't do the Egyptian sins and, and violation. Don't follow them Canaanites neither. Because they are the cursed seed. Pay attention. Satan's seed. Pay attention. Pay attention. Seed of seduction. You need to pay attention. <laughs> that we say, don't follow them custom. Don't do the thing. Don't love them things that is what they'll get put to death. Back to Wisdom of Solomon 12 and verse 4. For thou hatest their sorry, for thou hatest for doing the most odious work of witchcrafts and wicked sacrifices, the Canaanites, witchcraft, and also those merciless murders of children and devourers of man's flesh and the feast of blood. With their priests out of the midst of the idolatrous crews and the parents that killed with their own hands souls that you of hell in the midst of wickedness and sin. That the land which thou esteemest above all others might receive a worthy colony of God's children. That's why I tell you go and kill them all. Kill all them children of Canaan. Purge them. They're the children of Ham, Shan, Gershon. <laughs> Better than a cursed seed. Kill them all. Nevertheless, even those thou sparest as men and did ascend wasps. What? Wasps. As what? As forerunners of thine host. As who, they, they are what? The forerunners of the heavenly host, of the angel. Who's the host? A, a force for what? Destruction or army for destruction. The army of God, the angels, the heavenly angels. That's what they call the when you didn't host and the host and heavenly host. It's an army for destructive purposes. Pay attention. That would be what you're coming with. The destroyer and his army for destructive purposes. Pay attention. The heavenly angels. You see what? The wasp was forerunners. Of thine host, the army, to destroy them by little and little. So that was the place of Egypt was about destroying, taking on fear, fear on them little by little. So it was not in one week. He didn't destroy Egypt in one week. It was little by little. So he did what to Canaan? Destroy them what? Little by little, the Canaan, Alana Canaan. And he's doing, come about to do what he did. But that, that about, he's doing to what? This beast kingdom right now? Destroying them what? Little by little. This fourth woman beast kingdom, you need to pay attention. The iron and clay. Most I say what? I'm destroying them or disseminating them. Little by little. That's how the most I work. I do things in what? Measure, number, and weight. End time prophecies? Most I say yes. You need to pay attention. Because that's how, that's, how, that's how I work. I'm taking it apart. Dismantling it. The what? 
Not that thou was, was not able to bring the ungodly under the hand of the righteous in battle, or to destroy them at once with cruel beasts, or with one rough word. The most I say, King Solomon saying, the most I can take out anybody with one word. <laughs> to pay attention. But what did I do to Pharaoh? Little by little. Plague after plague after plague after. In other words, that torment they behind. The most I say, what? I do to what? The land of Canaan. Plague after plague after plague. Torment they behind the same way. And I'm doing to this fourth beast kingdom. Plague after plague after plague. You need to pay attention. The tsunamis, fire, earthquake. You need to pay attention. Pay attention to Moses sending the signs. The Moses said, I'm bringing more poverty and, and, and this fourth part of the Moses plagues. You need to pay attention. <laughs> I'm making it up. Just keep reading. Not, but what? But executing that judgment upon them little by little. The Moses said, What? He's, King Solomon said, The Moses is executing his judgment upon this fourth beast kingdom little by little. The enemies of the children of God, you pay attention. The Israelites, the enemies of the Israelites, or the children of God, or the elect, or the saints. The most I say, I will take them apart, little by little. Thou givest them place of repentance. What place of what? Repentance to change. To stop oppressing them, being oppressive to them. What what? Not being ignorant that they were in naughty generation. The most I say, King Solomon said, the most I knows that these nations are ignorant or naughty generation. He knows it. But he said, maybe they could change. Maybe they will stop oppressing them, that, the, not going beyond what I um, assigned them to do, the punishment. But you, King Solomon said he knew they were a naughty generation, they are children of Satan. He said he knows it. The most he knows it. But what? He's not ignorant of the other fact. And the boy gave them a chance to repent. But what? And that their malice was bred in them. They are what? Malice. They are malintended. They are not normal. They are not right in their mind. They are not sound in their mind. Their malice was bred in them. They are what? Built. For destruction, they are a destructive force built to punish. You need to pay attention. These hidden nations are destructive spirits built to punish. So the most I say, <laughs> King Solomon said, the most I know is aware, but he's saying maybe they will repent. Maybe they will repent. But what? They were not. They are naughty generation. You know they are naughty. Not being ignorant that they were naughty generation and that their malice was better than because the most I say I create them. I create them, but I still get no chance. <laughs> pay attention. But what? And that their cogitation. They are what? Their cogitation will never be changed. Their what? Cogitations will never be changed. The definition of the word cogitation. The capacity to think. The capacity to think. Compass. The, the, sorry, the capacity to think. Their concept. Their concept. They, they, they process things in their mind. Their ability to think. Intellection. Their intellectual capacity. Their what? Their mind's eye. How they see things or understand things. Pay attention. Their thought. Their thoughts. The picture, how they view the world, how they view the Israelites, pay attention as the enemy, as what, as as, as gorillas, as apes, pay attention, you need to pay attention, or not even a people, are got hanging by a tree, you need to pay attention, because the view or the picture view is less than a man, or less than an animal, pay attention, I could kiss a snake, I could have a snake as a pet, a dog, a cat, any animal, a possum, any animal, but I put it to death with no, no, no second thought, pay attention, you Israelites, I put it to death with no second thought. Because why their, their malice is bred in them and their cogitation or their capacity to think, their concept, their intellection, their mind's eye, their thought, their picture of how they look at you and their ideas of how they perceive you, Israelites, will not change. Pay attention. Would never be changed. King Solomon said that, verse 12, verse Solomon 12 and verse 10, that what? Not being ignorant, most I God not being ignorant of it, that their malice was bred in them, their mal intent spirits. Pay attention. Their spirits for destruction. And that their cogitation or their, their ability to think for themselves or be logical will never be changed. They, have, they are illogical. You need to pay attention. What was, watching Mr. Spock all the time, you need to pay attention. They are illogical. Mr. Spock said they are illogical. You need to pay attention where you're watching. You need to pay attention. The most I say, their cogitation will never be changed. They are built for that. Pay attention. They are the sword. They are the sword. They are the wicked of the earth or the sword of the Lord. For it was a cursed seed from the beginning. It was a what? Cursed seed. Where? From the beginning. From creation. You need to pay attention. It's the most high design. This is design. This is design. What's happening around you in this, earth, in this world is design. Just say the Lord. Neither did this down for fear of any man give them pardon for those things wherein they sin. But did miss a sin? But most I say, him, him pardoning. King Solomon said, him pardoning the hidden. Because why? They were a cursed seed from the beginning. The children of Canaan. Pay attention. And all these children in this kingdom, you need to pay attention. I make some for me, some not for me. Pay attention. So, 34. Some are mine, some in mind. I make good against evil to test the children of Israel to see whether they will obey me. So, chapter 34 and verse 
14. Good is Sorak 33, verse 14. Sorak 33, verse 14. Good is set against evil and life against death. So is the godly against the sinner and the sinner God against the godly. So look upon all the works of the Most High and they are two and two, one against another. The Most High said, make everything in duality, one against another. Good against evil. Pay attention. Malice against good. good. Pay attention. The naughty generation against a law keeping generation or righteous generation or holy nation. Pay attention. Which do the children of Israel after me? They are a holy nation, a royal priesthood. You need to pay attention. They are the apple of my eye and they make the wicked and the, the punish you behind if they don't do what I tell them to do. Pay attention. But they, so their malice will not go better than them and their cogitation will never change. That's why they can hang you from a tree and kill you behind, like with no question as they do to this day. Put a bullet in your head with no like no question. Traffic stop, kneel long and, and snuff your life out. No questions asked. You need, because their process and how they perceive you and how they see you is different. It's not that we, we, we can discern good and evil, wrong and right. <laughs> they can't. The most I say, that's how they're built. They're vessels of wrath. You need to pay attention. Vessels of wrath fitted for destruction, Romans 9 and 17 talking about. They are the vessels of wrath, vessels of destruction. You need to pay attention. They're going to do what they have come to do. King Solomon said, but why? You cannot pardon the sin, but why? They can't. The most I say, they, they cannot change. They cannot keep the law. They're not built to keep the laws of God. You need to pay attention. Their cogitation and their malice was better than them because their cogitation would never be changed. Their thought process cannot be changed. They cannot keep the laws. Impossible for them to keep the laws of God. Thus say the Lord. For who shall say, What hast thou done? Or who shall withstand thy judgment? Or who shall accuse thee for the nations that perish, whom thou hast made? Or who shall come to stand against thee? So most like say, King Solomon say, Why? Who can accuse him for destroying this nation that you made? Your creation. Who can judge you? Nobody. <laughs> it's that. And who shall come to stand against thee? The most I to be revenge for the unrighteous men. The most I say, who will stand against me for what? Unrighteous men for but to allow them to beat our behind and smack our behind and person that left, right, and center for what violation, violating his laws? For neither is there any God but thou that careth for all. There's no other God beside you, the most I. To whom thou mightest show that thy judgment is not unright, neither shall king or tyrant be able to set his face against thee. For any whom thou hast punished. Because there no man can stand up against the Mosai. Pay attention. He said, no man can stand up. For thy power is the beginning of righteousness, and because thou art the Lord of all, it maketh thee to be a gracious, to be gracious unto all. But thou master in power, sorry, but thou master in thy power, judges with equity, and orderest us with great favor. For thou mayest use power when thou wilt. The Mosai say he uses what? Power when thou wilt. For when men will not believe that thou art of a full power, Thou showest thy strength, and among them that know it, thou makest their boldness manifest. So when men take most of it granted, he said, come on and show up. Boom. There I am. But I, I could take you out little by little. But when I push the pencil, I would take you out. Boom. I could do it. That's what King Solomon said. He could do it at any time he want. But by such work hast thou taught thy people that the just man should be merciful and has made thy children to be of good hope, that thou give, give us repentance for sins unto the Israelites or the children of God. That's what the most I say. I, King Solomon said, He given us chance to repent. For if thou didst punish the enemies of thy children and the condemn to death with such deliberation, you, King Solomon said, He punished who? The enemies of the children of God or the Israelites. You pay attention, or the elect or the saints of the Israelites who return to the laws. He punished the enemies by what? Deliberation. Pharaoh, plague after plague after plague after plague after plague after plague after plague. Till I bring what? The final, final boom. The land of Canaan, the Canaanites. Plague after plague after plague after plague after plague till I destroy them. Sodom and Gomorrah. I dish all the enemies of Israel. I take them out. By what? By deliberation. Giving them time and place. Whereby they might be delivered from their malice. They, he's, still, he's still giving them time to what? That they go repent. They're going to stop. Be delivered from their malice. But they what? Their cogitations will never change. <laughs> the malice was bred in them. They were bred to do that. And the most I was still merciful. What did he do to... to what did the most I tell um, Cain in Genesis 3? He gave him chance to repent. Genesis, Genesis chapter 4, sorry. He gave him time to repent. Genesis 4 and verse 5. But unto Cain and his offering he had not respect, and Cain was very wrought, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wrought? Why are you mad? And why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? If you keep the laws and offer sacrifices, I will accept you. And if thou doest not well, sin light at the door, Satan will take you out. If you break my law, and what? And unto thee shall be his desire, Satan will to what? And thou shalt rule over him. Both I say, Satan will rule over you. And Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass. When they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. 
And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What hast thou done? He said, What did you do, Cain? Me, what did you do? Give him a chance to confess. The most I said, I know what you do, but tell, confess. Give, I give you a chance to repent. And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood cried out unto me from the ground. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which had opened the mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy, thy hand. And when thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee for strength, a fugitive and a vagabond shall thou be on earth. So the most had to bring judgment in the so Give him a chance to repent, to repent. He said, What hast thou done? What did he do? Confess his sin to me. <laughs> he didn't confess. And the most I punished you behind. Because his what? Malice was bred in him. <laughs> Satan's children. Pay attention. His cogitation will what? Never be changed as we are in this diaspora of Satan's under Satan's strength. Conquered on the earth. For our own sin, our own violation. <laughs> Pay attention. Go back to Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 12 and verse... Wisdom of Solomon 12 and verse... 20. Whereby they might be delivered from their malice. Because you give them what chance to... For if thou didst punish the enemies of thy children, the heathen nations that oppress the Israelites or the children of God, and the condemned to death with such deliberation, meticulously calculating thee, giving them time and place, as he did to Cain, pay attention, as he did to Pharaoh, because the plague, a plague in them, and let the children of Israel go. He wanted them to go, I send another plague, let the children of Israel go. Moses, go back to them. I send another plague. Moses, go back to them, tell them, let my people go. And Moses, keep going, and they wouldn't let them go, and another plague, and a plague, and a plague, because he was giving them chance to let them go. Pay attention, as he giving them chance to let us go from this four, four beast kingdom, from this diaspora where he's scattered in four winds. Conquered from 70 to now, conquered 1619, we conquered. Pay attention, the most I say what? i giving them chance to let them go. So I, I calculately and deliberately, plague in, plague after plague after plague. What? With deliberation, strategically, giving them time to and place. Where they might let the children of Israel go, let the apple of my eye go. But whereby they might be delivered from their malice, because they have malicious spirits. Pay attention. With how great circumspection did his thou judge thine own sons? You see that King Solomon say? With such great what? Circumspection. You judge your own sons. How you judge the Israelites? Pay attention to the children of God. Pay attention and look with the heathen. You give them time to repent. So the same way you say what? You circumspectly judge us be, uh, behind. Unto whose fathers thou hast sworn and made covenants of good promises. You swear to your father and you still punish you behind. <laughs> the most I, that what King Solomon said. The most I still punish you behind. And given the hidden chance, chance to let me go. Pay attention, let us go. Free them. Therefore, where was thou dost trust in us, thou scourgest our enemies a thousand times more. King Solomon just said, just as you could punish us and scatter our behind from 70 to now, send them in 1619 to gather up like sardines and ships. Pay attention. And put our behind to death, hungry, left, right, and center. Pay attention from trees. Still putting to death now, up to this present time. The King Solomon said, you do that to me. What are you going to do to the enemies? You're going to scourge them a thousand times more. Pay attention to the intent that when we judge, we should carefully think of thy goodness, and when we ourselves are judged, we shall look for mercy. Now we say what? Go and you can reprove your brother. Pay attention. Go and teach them repentance. That's why we're here, teaching you repentance. Come back to the laws. Wherefore, we, whereas men have lived dissolutely and unrighteously in sin, in sin, pay attention, living wanton, lewd, doing their own things, violating the laws, thou hast tormented them. With their own abominations. You see that once you continue in sin, you will torment you with your, your own sins, your own abomination, your own violation. You're punishing, you're being punished for your own violation. For they went astray very far in the ways of error and held them for gods, which even among the beasts of the enemies were despised. The Israelites going after what? False gods, fallen do what? Go not after the, the after the doings of the land of Egypt, do not do you not. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, do you not. After the lands of the doings of this fourth woman beast kingdom of Satan's hell. Do you not? And what? we go on after them. We're not listening to the Lord. We're going and what? Make marriages with them. Lean with them. Pay attention. The most I say, don't do it. Such theory. But what? They held them for gods. The idols, which even among the beasts of their enemies were despised. The beasts of the heathens. What? what, what? Reject. But we, we worship in them. False pagans and they worship. You need to pay attention. Sun worship. Straight sun worship. You need to pay attention. <laughs> Sun worship and, and cross and wood. Pay attention. The wood and cross, the wooden cross and stone. Pay attention. These false religions. The most I say what? Come out from among them. All these pagan worship. And as what? Being deceived. The what? The Israelites have been what? Deceived in these false religions, false institutions. As children of no understanding. Because we have what? Void of understanding. Void of the laws of God. 
to fear the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, a good understanding have they that do the commandments. Because if you don't do the commandments, you have no understanding, the children of God. Therefore, unto them, as the children, without the use of reason, thou did they send a judgment to mock them. As the children with what? Without the use of reason. You're not being reasonable, you don't want to do the laws of God. You're being unreasonable. We're being unreasonable now, right now in this diaspora, violating God's laws. He sent what? A judgment to mock us. Pay attention. Cast me behind under, under the, former, the Roman beast kingdom. Conquer behind and they're punishing us. To mock us. But what? But they that would not be reformed by that correction wherein he dally with them shall feel that judgment worthy of God. All who use the who will not repent and come back to the laws. Reform means what? Change. Change in the mind. Or corrected by the correction. When he's sending the, re the reproof and the correction, but wherein he dally with them, he's patient and long suffering and merciful shall feel that judgment worthy of God. You will be judged in the end. <laughs> Revelation 12, 20, 12, 13. The books were open and another book was open, which is the book of life. Your life with the laws of God. And every man was judged according to what was written in the books. The laws, whether they kept them or whether they, 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 they violated them. You will feel the judgment worthy of God because he was what? He dallied with us. He gave us what? Time to re reform and to correct it. Or sin. Come back to them laws. For look for what things they grudge when they were punished. That is, it's for them whom they thought to be gods. They were being, we have been punished for following what? Idols or the gods of the nations. Psalm 96 and 5. The gods of the nations are idols. They are heathen gods. Moses said, don't follow them. Now being punished in them. When they saw it, they acknowledged him to be the true God. Whom before they denied to know. And therefore came extreme damnation upon them. For sin. For rejecting the most High God. That's why we, 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 we rejected him. And went to the midst of sin. Following idols. Following idols. For idolatrous practices. That's why the most High was smash her behind around. Smack us around. Smack us around. I go to Exodus 23. And read verse 20. Exodus 23 verse 20. Exodus 23 verse 20. Exodus 20 and 20. Behold, I send an angel of uppercase A, Yahushua, before thee, to keep thee in the way, and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him, and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgression, for my name is, is in him. Most I say when Yahushua come, obey everything he tells you to do. So who was leading the children of Israel out of Egypt? Yahushua Mashiach is an uppercase A, <laughs> angel. He said, obey everything he tells you, and don't prov provoke him. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice, and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies, all the enemies of the Israelites, most I say I will be an enemy to them, and an adversary unto thine adversaries, all the enemies of the Israelites, most I say I will, be, I will be an adversary to them. For my angels shall go before thee, and bring thee in unto the Amorites, and the Pittites, and the Perizzites, and the Canaanites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. The most I say, I will cut them off. You need to pay attention. My command, my decree. So Yahushua is the one who will wreak in hell. If we read in Exodus 12 and 23. 1 Corinthians 10 and 1 to 10. He's a destroyer. Pay attention. The most I say, obey him. So who's the destroyer coming back? He came and walked on the earth as a man to show the Israelites. This is the way walking it. And he said, when I come back as a God, hell is going to break loose. You need to pay attention. Obey his voice. Because the most I say, he will destroy it. Because I am the one who will cut them off the hidden. Who has cut them off the hidden? Nations? The most I. Once you keep the laws and return the laws by what? He said, I will cut them off. I will take them off little by little. Jump to verse 20. Exodus 23. Read, sorry, Exodus 23, read verse 30. Um, verse, verse 27. I will send my fear before thee, and will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come. And I will make all thine enemies turn their backs unto thee. The most I say, I will make all the enemies of the Israelites run. When they, once you keep, to my, keep my laws or return to my laws, your enemies will scatter, will flee. I will send hornets before them. I will send what? Hornets or wasps before them, as I did to Egypt. Pay attention. Wasps, plagues. Which shall drive out the Hivite, the Canaanite, and the Hittite from before them. Just as I plague Egypt, I plague the land of Canaan. Same way. Pay attention. The promised land. I will drive them out from before thee in one, in one year. The most I say will drive them out in what? A whole year taken. Pay attention. A whole year I taken. I could do it in one day, but why? I taken a whole year because why? I want to do There's a reason behind it. Why I didn't take out Egypt in, in one week? You need to pay, pay attention. One day. Why? Why not, did not take out the land of Canaan in what? One week or one day. I do. I, I take, it up, take them out in one year. Lest the land become desolate. Because why? The land will become desolate. If I kill everybody at one time, it become in, uninhabited. And what's going to happen? And the beasts of the field multiply against thee. The animals, the wild animals will take over. Because it's not domestic. You see, no human life, life formerly. The domestic wildlife is going to take over. So the most I say, I have to do it what? Verse 30, 
By little and little, I will drive them out from before thee. I will drive them out what? By little and little, as I'm doing right now in this book diaspora with Israel, let's get Little by little, I'm disseminating it or taking away this fourth beast kingdom or this assembling this, this or dismantling this fourth beast kingdom. Pay attention. By their own weapons of war, by my own, my own, um, by nature, by, by, by the most, by most I say, by my own creation, by, by fire, by storm, by tsunamis. Pay attention. By earthquakes. Pay attention. I'm showing my power. And we do it by what? Little and little. And what? And I will drive them out from before thee until thou be increased and inherit the land. Until we what? We, we, we repent and keep coming in the numbers. And I will set thy bones from the Red Sea even unto the Sea of the Philistines and from the desert unto the river. For I will deliver the inhabitants of the land into your hand. And thou shalt drive them out before thee. The most I say, I am the one delivering them. And I am the one bringing the destruction. I am the one bringing the destruction. So that's what he's talking. End time prophecies. Go to Deuteronomy 7 and 22. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 22. Deuteronomy 7 and 22. And the Lord thy God will put out these nations from before thee by little and little. Thou mayest not consume them at once, lest the beasts of the field increase upon thee. That was what I say. Little by little, because I don't want the animals to overrun all it. They will come and eat dead bodies. They need to pay attention. And they will overrun it. So little by little, so they have time to bury the dead. You need to pay attention. You need to understand the God that is serving. Um, Exodus chapter 24 and verse 10. Exodus 24 and verse 10. Exodus chapter 24 verse 10. Exodus 24 and 10. And they saw the God of Israel, and there was under his feet, as it were paved work of sapphire stone, and as, as it were the body of heaven in his cleanness. So the children of Israel, Moses went up to, Mo, to Moses went up with Aaron and Nadab and Abihu. And seventy of the elders of Israel, and they saw the Most High God. He revealed Himself to them. And what? And the Lord said unto Moses, Come up to me into the mount, and be there, and I will give thee tables of stone, and a law and commandments which I have written, that thou mayest teach them. Go and teach them Israelites the laws, statutes, commandments, judgment, and so testimony. Not just two, not, not just ten commandments. Ten commandments and the tables of stone, and a law, a whole law and commandments, and pay attention which I have written. Go and teach them. There's plenty laws. Go and teach them. Pay attention. I went for 40 days and 40 nights to get 10 commandments. This is the most I that dumb. Not that simple. No, because you give me laws. I give you laws. Laws I give you. Go to first Maccabees 3 and read verse 48. First Maccabees 3 and verse 48. First Maccabees 3 and 48. And they laid open the book of the law. Wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of the images. So these heathen have got taken the Bible and painting what? The likeness of the image of iconoclasm that the Israelites look like these heathen nations. Pay attention right now. <laughs> when the Israelites are what? The most I say they are, they are woody here, like me. You need to pay attention. Now this what? They, in this diaspora, they scattered like what? A speckled bird. When they say the most I say, because why? We, we lay with other nations and mix interbreeding. So the man lay with what? Other nations and the, the trend come out looking at multiple colors. But the, the bulk or the mass majority of my people look like me. <laughs> the most I say, that white woolly here, that woolly here, just like me. Pay attention as feet as, as, as burnt in a furnace look like me. But they have mingled themselves among the skeeter men. So there's what? The speckled bird aspect of the Israelites. So it is to, it's hard to look at somebody and say, you're not Israelites because your skin of this color or your skin of that color. But most I say, what? But I, it's, just, it's, it's spirit doing this thing now. The most I say, I got it in my spirit. But the bulk of them, they, they look like me. You need to pay attention. I made them in my image and my, like, my likeness. Pay attention. And you read Daniel 7 and 9, when you read Revelation chapter 1 and verse 14 down. Pay attention. The image of the most like God. Lamentations 4 and 8. You need to pay attention. Lamentations 5, 4, 5 and 10. Pay attention. The scriptures, the image of the Israelites is always throughout the book. What we look like. But the what? The heathen laid open the books of the law. Wherein the heathen sought to paint the likeness of the image, the iconoclasm, they started to what? Water and water down the images of the Israelites. To make them look like them because they are in power. You need to pay attention. To read what? But what does the most I do? They brought also the priest garments and the first fruits and the tithes and the Nazarites, they stood up, who had accomplished their days. Then cried they with a loud voice towards heaven, saying, What shall we do with these? And whither shall we carry them away? For thy sanctuary is trodden down and profane, and thy priests are in heaviness and brought low. And lo, the heathen are assembled together against us to destroy us. So they like cry out to the Mosai. The heathen, the, the, the painting the images out. Mosai, what are we going to do? What things they imagine against us? Thou knowest. 
how shall we be able to stand against them except thou, O God, be our help? Did that what the Israelites understood? The Maccabees saying what? How shall we be able to stand against them except you don't help you help us, Mosai? Then sounded they with the trumpets, the Israelites, the Maccabeans, and, and cried with a loud voice. And after this, Judas ordained captain. Judas who? Judas Maccabees, son of Mattathias. He ordained what? Captains over the people. Even captains over thousands and over hundreds and fifties and over tens. But as for such as were building houses, the men that were what? Building houses, when we do 20, or had betrothed wives, Luke 14, Luke 12, Luke 16, pay attention. Most I say what? Luke, as in the days and what they were eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage, pay attention. Building houses, or betrothed wives, or what? Promised to be married to wives, or were planting vineyards, plant, pay attention. You need to pay attention the Bible is talking about. Go to Luke chapter 17 and verse 26. They were what? Luke chapter 17, verse 26. Such as were building houses. Luke 17, verse 26. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the Solomon. When I come, they did eat, they drank, they married wives, and they were given in marriage. Until the day Noah entered the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all, like killed them all for eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage. Under Noah, but what happened? Likewise also in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, and they bought, and they sold, and they planted. Planting vineyards, building houses, you need to pay attention. And the same day Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. It's most I said, kill them all for that. Because there's a loss of this world and the things of this world, Satan's kingdom. Even thus, the same way, shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed, when I come as a God. In that day he which shall be on the house top, and the stuff in the house, let him not come down. Because the things of the world, don't worry about that, leave it alone. Keep my laws. Let him not come down to take it away. It's leave it behind. Pay attention. Be as pilgrim. Be as pilgrims upon the earth. Let him likewise not return back. Remember Lot's wife. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. Whosoever is going to hang on to the things of the world, I will put them to death. End time prophecies. Just as I did with Noah. With the Noah. With the flood. Just as I did with Sodom and Gomorrah. I'm about to do the same thing again. The most I say. <laughs> if you try to hang on to your whole life. Love the things of the world. You're going to die. Pay attention. Luke 17, 26, they were eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage. Pay attention. Back to 1 Maccabees 1 and 56. But as for such as were building houses, pay attention, or had betrothed wives, marrying, or were planting vineyards, pay attention. Luke 14, or what planting vineyards? Luke chapter 14 and verse 18, 17. And sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, come, he made, because he made a marriage, and invited them. And all things are not ready, and they all with one consent began to make excuse. Excuse is not to follow the laws of the Most High God, to repent. The fool said, I have bought a piece of ground, I must needs go and prove, see it. I pray they have me excuse, I can't come and keep them laws. Another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray they have me excuse, I can't come and keep their laws, I, I, I ain't ready to repent yet. And another said, I have married a wife, therefore I cannot come. Have me excuse, I can't come and keep them laws yet, I can't repent yet. They were what? Excuses for not coming and keep God's laws. Pay attention, for not following them whole heart, whole heart today. Back to verse Maccabees 3 and 56. But as for such as were building houses, pay attention, I build a house, or had betrothed wives, a, bar, a marrying a wife, a betrothed a promise, a promise a wife, a marrying a wife, or planting vineyard. You're making excuse. Pay attention. Or, or what? Or were fearful. He called them what? Fearful. Fearful. Pay attention. So Judas is saying, this is the law in Deuteronomy. Yeah, Deuteronomy 20. And verse 1 to, 1 to 8, that's the law. If you go into war, you can't come and battle for me. Were you married in wives, eating, drinking, planting? Both I say you're fearful. You have a fearful spirit. You don't want to come and follow me. You don't want to stand up stiffly and bravely for me. Pay attention. Those he commanded that they should return. Go back. Every man to his own house. According to the law. According to what? The law of Moses, Deuteronomy 20 and 5. Go back. <laughs> you're faint, fearful, faint-hearted. Go back. You need to pay attention. That's the most I say. End time prophecies. What do they do now? The same thing. These vanguards. Great wedding feast. Great wedding feast. Wedding feast after wedding feast. You need to pay attention. These men are not sent by the Most High God. They're not teaching in the Bible. They're not warning of the dangers. He's telling you, not warn them. Go and give them warning from me. That's what Most High said. Go and warn them, because I'm about to what? Bring de decimation unto this earth. Um, go to Luke seven and thirty. Read Luke chapter seven, verse thirty. Luke seven, verse thirty. But the Pharisees and lawyers rejected the counsel of God against themselves, being not baptized of Him. They refused to hear John the Baptist. So he, um, he said what? They, they reject the counsel of God. They what? They didn't reject John the Baptist. They reject the counsel that most High God sent to them. These Pharisees and rulers. As the vanguards, modern day vanguards, rejecting the counsel of God being sent to them. Pay attention. Against who? Themselves. They marked for destruction. Pay attention. 
Against yourself means what? They are marked. Be not baptized of him, refusing to submit and come and repent and keep God's laws. They have marked themselves for death, for destruction. For destruction. Romans 1 and verse 29. Romans chapter 1, verse 29. Who will know in the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death? The ones who live in these lascivious lifestyles, who don't want to come back and repent and keep God's laws, who live in the, the, the lifestyle of Sodom and Gomorrah, pay attention. Both sides say what? They what? All who live in those lifestyles and the ones who know that they live in those lifestyles and not reproving and rebuking them, who know in the judgment of God, God's wrath and God's judgment is just, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Who continue to live this lascivious and lustful lifestyles are worthy of what? Death. What? Not only do the same, not the ones alone that are doing it or living those lifestyles, but have pleasure in them that do them. The ones who say, it's my friend, it's my friend. He could do what he want, she could do what she want, it's my friend. The most I say, you having pleasure in them not doing it, and you're going to die along with them. You need to pay attention. If you don't repent and confess and forsake your sins and return to my law, you will die because you have having pleasure in them that do it. That's what I do to Solomon Gomorrah, burn it to the ground. The most I say, the same thing. Why? Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. Romans 12 and 2. Why? You're going to say, thus say the Lord, whether they hear or whether they forbear. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. You have to be what? How do you present your bodies? When you say bodies, it's a temple, it's a spirit. You have to clean up your spirit. Clean it up from sin. How do you present yourself a living sacrifice? Holy. Becoming what? Holy. Romans 7 and 12. Wherefore the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good. By applying the laws and the commandments and to the testimonies of the most high God to your life. Becoming holy. Presenting your bodies a what? Living sacrifice as you be in a living being. From a natural body to become a Spiritual body, pay attention by the application of the laws. Presenting the body is a living sacrifice to the most high. Pay attention. Repenting while you're under grace and faith. <laughs> Keeping them laws. Holy acceptable unto God, which is your reason of a service. That's the whole duty of man. Ecclesiastes 12 13. Fear God and keep his commandments. That's what the duty of man. Your reason of a service. Presenting your body is a living sacrifice. And be not conformed to this world. Stop loving the things of this world. As we read, though, eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage. Love, stop loving the things of this world. And be renewed and be not conformed to this world. Don't attach, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Detach from here and get out. <laughs> get out. Get out. Run for your life. Wisdom of Solomon 8 and 17. He said what? Run for your life. Because I'm about to what? Bring the great boom. Wisdom of Solomon 8 and verse 17. Now when I consider these things in myself and ponder them in my heart, how to be allied unto wisdom is immortality. To be what? Allied to wisdom or the Holy Spirit. By keeping the laws is what? Immortality or everlasting life. Immortality or everlasting life. Romans 2 and 7. Romans chapter 2 verse 7. To be aligned to the laws of God is immortality and everlasting life. Romans 2 and verse 7. To them who are by patient continuance and well doing, seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. So immortality is what? Eternal life. But Matthew 19, 16, 17. The, and one came unto him and said, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? He asked Yahushua, what should I do? And what was Yahushua's response? If thou will enter into life, if you want eternal life, keep the commandments. Eternal life is immortality. That's what he's standing right here. To be allied unto wisdom, the Holy Spirit is to keep is, is keeping the laws. It, that's what's going to give you what immortality or be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind or presented by the living sacrifice by the application of the law. That's what's going to make you live. Otherwise, you're going to die. Daniel 7 and 9. Daniel chapter 7, verse 9. Daniel 7 and 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down. All rulership on this earth is going down. Musa is about to what? End time prophecies. He's about to bring the end. The boom. I beheld till the thrones were cast down. And the ancient of days did sit. He's coming to set rulership here on this earth. Bringing the heavenly tabernacle to earth. Pay attention. So I had to purge the earth of sin. Whose garment was white as snow? He had on what? Clothes. A garment. So he has what? A body. Yeah, you pay attention. And the hair of his head, like the pure wood. The Mosai has what? Pure woolly hair. Pay attention. <laughs> pure woolly hair. The New Century Dictionary says what? The kinky, curly hair belonging to the head of a Negro. Pay attention. The Mosai has pure woolly hair. He'll be coming to set up law and order here. To take this kingdom over. Second Ezra 15. Second Ezra chapter 15 and read verse 10. 10 to 20. Second Ezra 15 and 10. Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter, the Israelites. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. Is it what is Egypt is talking about? This is Ezra. Egypt was gone way before Ezra. 
but 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 I will bring them with a mighty hand and with a stretch out arm. I will deliver them another Exodus and smite Egypt. This Egypt are talking about with plagues, just with what as before, as I smote ancient Egypt with flies and, and all the different plagues and the blood and the water and what and all these plagues as I did ancient Egypt, I will smite this Egypt and the Israelites in with plagues as I did ancient Egypt on the Pharaoh. So where is this Egypt? Read Revelation 11 and 15. What is this Egypt you're talking about? Revelation chapter 11 and verse 15. Sorry, Revelation 11 and verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. Pay attention, where also our Lord was crucified. Spiritually called Sodom and spiritually called what? Egypt. Sodom lifestyle, all the Sodom and Gomorrah lifestyle, and all the Egypt witchcraft lifestyle. Right here, right here, right here in the diaspora. He said, was smited with plagues as before. Same thing. Pay attention. So the most I do is what? Little by little, or meticulously, or with deliberation, or calculating this, this, meeting, this for this kingdom. Hell, where we are. In hell. Pay attention. He's burning it. Pay attention. And smite Egypt with plague, 2nd Ezra 15, 11. And will smite Egypt with plague as before, as they destroyed Pharaoh, and will destroy all the land thereof. All this who die as poor the Israelites are. Egypt shall mourn, and the foundation of it shall be spitten with the plague and punishment that God shall bring upon it. They that till the ground shall mourn, for their seed shall fail through the blasting and the hail, and with a, tear, with a fearful consolation. I bring in what? Blasting and hail. Woe to the world. Mean what? Destruction. Who is this Egypt I'm talking about? The world. The world. The world. Destruction to the world. Woe to the world. And them that dwell therein. All that the inhabitants. Pay attention. Destruction means what? To the inhabitants of this world and they, who dwell here. For the sword and the destruction there at night. And one people shall stand up to fight against another. Because the sword, the most is behind it. The sword and the destruction draw it night. Pay attention. And one nation goes stand up and fight against another nation. The Mosai say, well, I am the one behind it. You need to pay attention. With, and swords in your hand. Swords is what? Nowadays is what? Weapons. Weapons. Pay attention. Weapons of mass destruction. Pay attention. Weapons in their hands. For there shall be sedition among men. Nobody loyal to nobody no more. See, this one mean what? I want what you have, and you want what I have. And I take, we, we were watching Mad Max back in the day, you need to pay attention. The war for resources, you need to pay attention. The most I say, I am doing it. What? There shall be sedition among men and invading one another. They shall not, they pay attention, you need to pay attention to what's happening, to, to the, what's happening on the earth right now. The most I is doing this thing, this marvelous work. They shall not regard their kings, no princes. They don't care about no respect for no one, no one no more. It's out the window. Pay attention, the gloves are off. And the course of the actions shall stand in their power. How much ICBMs I have. Pay attention. How big is my weapon? My arsenal. The most I say what? They will be going to determine what I do. Who I destroy, who I take out. Pay attention. The most I say, I am the one behind it. I am doing it all. And I sit back and watch it. Pay attention. Why? Because little by little, I'm taking apart taking apart the beast kingdom to deliver the apple of my eye. They have my, the apple of my eye. They have my people. They have my people who I deliver to them. But I give them chance to repent. But the cogitations was burning them. Their malice was burning them. They cannot change. <laughs> but I gave them chance to repent. Because the Moses say, I'm a master. I'm the master chess, ma chess, make chess player. You need to pay attention. I created the game of chess. You need to pay attention. For there shall be sedition among men and invading one another. You shall not regard their kings nor princes. And the course of the action shall stand in their power. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled. The houses shall be destroyed and men shall be afraid. Death and destruction is coming. Pay attention. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses and the, with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread. Famine is coming on a level that you never, you never comprehend. And for great tribulation, behold, said God, I will call together all the kings of the earth to reverence me. So who is this Egypt you're talking about? All the kings of the earth in the diaspora right here, right now, where the children of Israel has kept conquered. Pay attention. Hidden in plain sight. I will call together all the kings of the earth to reverence me. The most I say to bow down to me. Pay attention. Which are from the rising of the sun, from the south and from the east and from Lebanon, to turn themselves one against another and to repay the things that they have done unto them, that they've done to the Israelites, that they've done to the children of God. Conquered from 780, conquered 1619. Pay attention. And, and gather up from the four winds. Pay attention. The most I say what? I am calling them together to what? Repay. Repay. Because I am doing it what? By measure. And by way, pay attention, I am the one causing it. Like as they do, yet this day unto my chosen, so will I do also, and recompense in their bosom. Thus said the, God, the Lord God. The most I say what? Thus said the Lord God. I will do this, it's my retribution and my payback. <laughs> you need to pay attention. My payback. Revelation 16 and verse 1. 
Revelation 16, verse 1. I'm reading one down. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of wrath of God upon the earth. Go and do what? Pour out the vials of the wrath of destruction of God on the earth. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth. And there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them that worship his image, all who follow the seed, the Satan, all who follow, follow the devil, Satan's fallen kingdom. That we're telling you, you want to continue following these things, the things of this world, and the lust and the lasciviousness, you will die with them. You still have the mark of the beast. Pay attention. We say they were eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage, because it's the do not after the doings of the land of Egypt or the land of Canaan. It's, 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 it's lascivious lifestyles. The most I say, what? The most I said, Satan seduced Eve from the beginning. And seduce Adam. Pay attention. To come back to Adam's purity, you need to do what command you to do. Otherwise, you will die here with them. The most I say, still have the mark of the beast. You're following the beast, Satan. And you're worshiping his image. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as blood of, the, of a dead man. And every living soul it died in the sea. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of water, and it became blood. Plagues. And I heard the angel of the water say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and which was and shall be, because thou hast judged us judged equitably. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. The spiritual Solomon and Egypt. The most I say, this fourth beast kingdom that conquered the children of Israel. The most I say, they killed, they shed the blood of the saints, hanging them from trees, pay attention, dumping them off the, trans in, of the ocean. You need to pay attention. Off of these ships, you need to pay attention. Butchering them in the north, southern, central America. The most I say, what? They have shed the blood as they do. They're still butchering them up to this day. Dragging them behind vehicles. The most I say, what? Kneeling on the necks and snuffing their life out. Bullets in their head. But, but, because their cogitation would never be changed. Their malice is burning them. <laughs> their vessel fitted for destruction. Or built for destruction. The most I say, what? For they are what? Worthy. Did the angels say what? They are worthy to, be, to get the judgment that they're getting right now. End time prophecies. They are worthy to get everything that's, been, that's happening right now to them. The most I say, what? I'm taking it apart. Clinically. The most I say, what? And I heard another out. Of the altar say, even so, Lord, God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgment. The angels are saying, giving praise to the Mosai. Yea, Lord, righteous judgment. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat, and blasphemed the name of, the, of God, which had power over these plagues. And they repented not to give him glory. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast. And his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues of pain, for pain. And blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores and repented not of their deeds. Because both King Solomon said, I give them the hidden time to repent, but they will not, they cannot repent. That's what he's saying. The Most I still giving them the, my creation, but I give them time to repent. But their cogitation will never be changed. Their malices burden them. Pay attention, they cannot change. <laughs> but I still giving them a chance. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water there was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And the Euphrates river dried up, and I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophets. Out of who? The dragon, the beast, and the false prophets. Satan. Pay attention. Satan and his minions, his hierarchy. For they are the spirits of devils, working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world, to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. They are the spirit of what? Devils, so these kings of this earth, or these rulers on this earth, or these prime ministers, presidents, pay attention, on this earth have spirits of who? Devils on them, pay attention. Spirits of Satan, pay attention. you need to pay attention, it's the most I creation. I created them, but what? They go forth unto the kings of the earth, to do what? And of the whole world, the whole earth, to gather them, to bring them what? To the battle of that great day of God Almighty, to bring them to the battle, pay attention. The, the final showdown, the final conflict, you need to pay attention. Armageddon. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth. The most I say, what? When I come, nobody would know when I make my appearance. But I'm taking them out little by little as I plague Egypt. Little by little until you shall come and do so. Boom! Pay attention. Come with the host and run havoc on them. Pay attention. But they send the plagues before? Yes. He sent the plagues. The ten plagues? He sent them before. Plague. After plague. Go and tell them, let them go. Plague. He did plagues here now? He's plaguing. But they don't know when I'm coming. You need to pay attention. When I make the final entry. That says he that watch it, repent and what? And keep at his garments. Repent and confess and forsake his sin. You Israelites, pay attention. Lest he walk naked. Nakedness is what? Sin, according to Exodus 32 25. Aaron made the children of Israel naked by worshiping the golden calf. Pay attention, going into sin. The Moses said, there's a catch for catch all worshiping the beast or this, this for, worshiping this false beast, this false beast kingdom. False and false beast kingdom. 
and they see his shame, most I say, won't put it to death with them. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. What? Armageddon, final conflict. You need to pay attention. The most has gathered the kings of this earth to bring them to, 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 to turn themselves against each other, to repay the things that they've done unto his people, the Israelites. Pay attention. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of, the, of heaven from the throne saying, It is done. The angels say what? It is done. Pay attention. It is finished. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as what not since such, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. What all these nations going down? Daniel seven and nine. The thrones were cast down. Pay, pay attention. The cities of the nations fell. This this earth, this rulership is going down. The Most High is about to destroy this kingdom. Pay attention to bring the heavenly tabernacle or the new Jerusalem. To establish back to the Garden of Eden for the Israelites, the saints or the elect of God who will return to the Lord, who will repent and confess and forsake their sins and detach from this sinful kingdom. Detach from worshipping Satan in hell. We are worshipping Satan in hell. You have fallen from your God. You have been detached from your God. You have been disconnected from your God, you Israelites. Return to your God. Pay attention. Let him come and do his marvelous work. The most I say what? And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and the great Babylon came in remembrance before God. To give unto her the cup of the wine of the fiercest of his wrath. And is who? Babylon the Great. The Great Babylon? Babylon the Great. Any ancient Babylon I'm talking about. Babylon the Great. And what? Spiritually, Solomon, Egypt. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. Uh, destroying this land. Pay attention. When them ICBM start dropping, what do you going to happen? You need to pay attention. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent. And men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail. For the plague there was, was exceeding great. They meet them ICMs will fly. You need to pay attention. They will fly. The Most High didn't make them make that army. That, that's the army of the Lord. That's the weapons of the Most High God indignation. You need to pay attention. That's the Bible. <laughs> Go to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 54 and verse 3. That's the Most High weapons. Isaiah 50. 4 and verse 16. Behold, I have created a smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created a waster to destroy. He's talking about the ancient smith. And then he say what? I created what? A waster to destroy. A, a, a waster to what? Destroy. A waster. <laughs> I'm going to take it off. Because he's opening in his what? Army. His army. Good um, Psalms. Go to Psalms chapter 17, Psalm 17, verse 13. Psalm 17, verse 13. Psalm 17 and 13. Arise, O Lord, disappoint him, cast him down, deliver my soul from the wicked which is thy sword. The wicked that oppressed the Israelites is the sword of the Lord. From men which are thy hand, they are the hand of the Lord. O Lord, from men of the world, they are what? Men of this kingdom, sinful kingdom, Satan's kingdom, which have their portion in this life. That's why they feel too rich, that's why they have all the wealth and the power. This is their heaven. This is your Israelite's help. And you've been delivered into their hands. Pay attention. From whose belly thou fillest with thy hid treasure. That's why they have all the wealth and the property. Pay attention. The Most High has blessed them. This is their kingdom. Of the dew of the heaven, this Esau's blessing. Of the dew of the heaven, pay attention. Of the, of the fatness of the earth, thou shalt live. Pay attention. That's his, his blessing. From his, pay, pay attention. That's his blessing. You need to pay attention. They are the rulers of this world, this kingdom. Pay attention. And all the hidden nations. They are full of children and leave the rest of their substance to their babes. They pass on what? The inheritance. Inheritance and the inheritance. You need to pay attention. Go to Psalm 73 and 3. Psalm chapter 73, verse 3. Psalm 73 and 3. For I was envious of the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. They were what? They were prospering. Verse 12. Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in this world. They increase in riches because they are the children of Satan in Satan's kingdom. This is their blessing. Pay attention. Go to um, Acts chapter 3 and verse 20 to 23. Acts chapter 3 verse 20 to 23. Acts 3 and 20. And he shall send Yahushua Mashiach, which before was preached unto you. Yahushua was coming to which was what? Before preached unto you. Where? Deuteronomy 18, 18. A prophet from from shall the Lord your God raise up from you unto you from among your brethren like unto you Moses him shall he hear in all things and I will put my word and he shall speak unto them 
Oh, my words, which I shall put in his mouth, and he shall speak all that I command him. That was the most I say unto I will send us my son. And what? Whom the heaven must receive until the restitution of all things. They will put him to death, kneel him to the cross, and he will resurrect back to me. Come and show them how to repent. Which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren. Like unto me, him shall you hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. The most I say, he's going to speak what I command him. All my words, laws, statutes, commandments, judgment, testimonies. And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. All who don't hear Yahushua, when he came and taught what he came and taught on the earth, repent, keep them laws. When I come back as a God, he will destroy you, decimate you. You're going to pass into end time prophecies. You're going to pass into destruction. You need to pay it because he didn't obey. Zechariah chapter 14 and verse 1 to 3. Zechariah chapter 14, verse 1 to 3. Zechariah 14 and 1. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. Most I shall bring them all them to, and what? And the city shall be taken, 70 AD. They take me out, pay attention, and the house is rifled, and the women ravished, and half the city shall go forth into captivity. From 70 AD you conquered, pay attention. And the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations. Then what? After Because of 70 AD, the most I bring the sword against us for sin. When we cry out unto him and bring, we come back to the laws, he's going what? And fight against those nations. As when he fought in the day of battle, because he's a man of war. Once we return to him, he's coming and bring hell. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. Verse 9. He shall be what? King over all the earth because he's coming to shut this down. Pay attention. Verse 12. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. All who came against the trend of Israel from the time immortal. The most I say what? All. All. He said all the people, all these heathen nations, all the residue, residue of them that are still left on the earth, still have the trend of Israel. Pay attention. Elam. You need to pay attention. The, the, the Babylonians, pay attention. Yes, they are wrong still. Yes, the, the, the offsprings are still here. Medo-Persians, they're still here. You need to pay attention. The Greeks, yes, they're still here. And the who? The Roman fourth beast kingdom. They what? The most I say what? And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. All who came against the Israelites. Pay attention. From time immortal, their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. What's going to make your flesh melt while they're standing? ICBMs or tumor nuclear warfare. Pay attention. They will be used. They are the weapons of the most high indignation. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand up on their feet. And their eyes shall consume away in their holes. While they're standing up, your eyes melt. Pay attention. While they're standing on their feet. And their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. While they're standing on their feet. No time to drop. Flash. You need to pay attention. When that drop and flash, you no time to drop. Melt. Pay attention. The most I see, I am doing it. Because why? End time prophecies. You need to pay attention. What time you're in and what's about to hit you. Jeremiah chapter 50 and verse 33. Jeremiah 50, verse 33. Jeremiah 50 and 33. The, Thus said the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah, who oppressed together, conquered on the earth, and all that took them captives held them fast. They refused to let them go. Just as he said with Egypt, let my people go. And Moses gone tell them, let my people go. They wouldn't let them go. That's the same thing, Lord. The Moses say, all that held them captives refused to let them go. So what? Their Redeemer is strong, the Lord of hosts is his name. He shall truly plead their cause. You need to pay attention. He's coming to plead our cause, to fight and decimate this fort, this kingdom. Pay attention, the most I come to bring death and destruction. Why? Ephesians 6 and 11. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 11. For we rest, read 12. Put on, put on the whole armor of God as you may be able to stand against the wise of the devil. Craftiness of the devil. Because they're in hell and they know you have a clue in hell. He deceiving it behind and he thinking in heaven. Pay attention. He glorifying and, and, and Lord in this sinful kingdom. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. It's not mortal men you're dealing with, but what? Against, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Satan and, his, his, and the fallen angels with him. You need to pay attention. High level demons you're battling against. So you have to put on what? The whole armor of God. Repent and come back, come back to the laws. Confess and forsake his sins. Why we're here in the last days? To give warning of the destruction of the hell that Moses is about to bring on this earth. You need to pay attention. Psalm chapter 2. Psalm chapter 2 and verse 1. Why do the heathen rage? And the people imagine the vain things. Why are these heathen nations mad? They're living it up. This is their heaven. They're, they're living the best, eating the best, drinking the best, have all the wealth, all the power. Pay attention to putting the death at their will. But Musa is not punishing them for it, but they have sanctioned. Free reign because we are in the midst of sin. But why do they rage? Why are you mad now? When the Musa is judging you behind. 
Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers, the rulers of the earth and the, the rulers of the nation of Israel, the vanguards, are what? Wicked as hell in collusion with the heathen, destroying, still trying to stop the saints from getting out. Still trying to stop the elect from getting out, going back to the God, we connect with the God. Pay attention. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers over a nation, the rulers of the Israelites, pay attention, take counsel together. They in what? Crafty counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. They hate God and hate the Mosai. They hate the Mosai and they hate his son. That's why they what? Still continue willful sin. At this level, you need to pay attention. They are haters of God. He that sitteth in the heavens, let us break their cords. Sorry, they say what? Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. Let us disconnect the Israelites. Pay attention. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The most I laugh because the most I say, This is my play. I orchestrate this whole thing. This is my doing, my creation. And you trying to outsmart me? Pay attention. My foolishness is smarter than the wisest move of a man on earth. The most I say, What? You, you laughing. You simple as hell. The Lord shall have them in derision. He will. The most I say, laughing. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath, because he's a man of war, and vex them in his sore displeasure. I'll come to destroy. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. You say what? I'm setting up my, my son to rule. I will declare the decree the Lord has said unto me. Thou art my son, Yahushua. This day have I begotten thee, Yahushua. You're my son. I have what? Begotten thee, the only begotten of the Father. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance. The most I tell Yahushua, just ask me. To, what, what, ask me, I will deliver them into your hand. I will give you what? The heathen nations for thy what? Inheritance. And the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. You're going to what? Rule them. Pay attention. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt do what? Break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Bring death and mayhem. Pay attention. End time prophecies? You're living in dangerous times right now. Full finished script ending. So a lot of you will still asleep. You don't have a clue. Pay attention. Be wise now, therefore, O you kings. What? what? You kings of the earth. Be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Be wise, because Yahushua Mashak is, is about to wreak hell. Rage hell on this earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the sun, lest he be angry and he perish from the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, when he only a little mad. Pay attention. <laughs> Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Only one who will escape is who put their trust in the Lord. Keep the laws. Pay attention. Second Maccabees 1 and verse 23. And the priest made a prayer while the sacrifice was consuming, I say, both the priests and all the rest. Jonathan beginning, and the rest answering they were to as Nehemiah did. So they made a, a feast to the Most High God, the purification of the temple. And the prayer was after this manner, O Lord, Lord God, creator of all things, who art fearful and strong, and righteous and merciful, and the only and gracious King, the only giver of all things, the only just, almighty and everlasting, thou that deliverest Israel from all trouble. And did us choose the fathers and sanctify them. Receive the sacrifice for their whole for thy whole people Israel. Receive what? The sacrifice for thy whole people Israel, because they were sanctifying the temple, purifying the temple. And preserve thine own portion and sanctify thy who? Own portion. Um, so Acts 17, 17, the most I say, Israel is my portion. I create all men and I set a ruler over all of them, but Israel is my portion. You say what? That was my portion. Receive who? Thy portion. Sirach 17, 17. Sirach 17, verse 17. For in the divisions of the nations of the whole earth, he set a ruler over every people. Every nation has their rulers, the hidden rulers, but Israel is the Lord's portion. The Israelites are his portion. Second Maccabees 1 and verse 26. Receive the sacrifice of thy whole people, Israel, and preserve thine own portion, Israelites, and sanctify it. Gather those together that are scattered from us. Deliver them that serve among the heathen, that who conquered in servitude or captivity. Look upon them that are despised and abhorred, that hated and abhorred by all nations on this earth, all these heathen nations, hate or behind. Pay attention. And abhorred because we sinned against our God and turned their spirits against us because their, their spirit is different to us. They do not have the, the emotional aspect of it. Pay attention to no good and evil. They just know one thing what they build and design to do. The what? That the heathen know that thou art our God. That what? They will know that you are our God. Punish them that oppress us. Do what? Punish them that oppress us. And with pride do us wrong. Plant thy people again in thy holy place as Moses had spoken. And the priests sung psalms of thanksgiving. Pay attention. So that was a prayer. Deliver the children of Israel. Moses said what? End time prophecies? What's transpiring on the earth right now? The Moses is plaguing these nations and calculating it. This, this assembly is for this kingdom. Little by little by little as you plague Egypt. Ancient Egypt, pay attention. He's playing it, playing it now. 
you need to pay attention. We had the tsunamis years ago. We had the earthquakes. We had fire, fire after fire for for months, six months, seven months. Fire burning in, in, in throughout the earth and the mountains and hills throughout the earth. You need, the most I've been playing in this. You need to pay attention. Wake up, Israelites. Repent and come back to the Lord your God. Keep your keep His laws. Confess and forsake your sins. Confess and forsake your sins. Otherwise, you will die. You will pass in the plagues that the Most High sent in these last days. He's turning these nations to destroy each other. Pay attention, as he did with the Midianites. They turn up the chaos when the um, Gideon sound the trumpet and break the, the, the pictures and the chaos. The men start destroying one another. Pay attention. They kill each other off in the multitude. You need to pay attention. What does he do now? Turn themselves one against another to pay the things. Repay the things that they've done to them. Pray you get some understanding from today's class. Shalom.